Chapter 39, Chapter 35, A Chat Under the Crystal Light Sky Once camp was set up we created a nice-sized fire. We then got to making some proper dinner. Since all we've had to eat for the last few days is dried meat and other non-perishable foods like nuts and grains. We've had enough. It's time for some real food. Courtesy of our best cook Milhior. She whipped us up a nice meat and vegetable stew that everyone enjoyed. Even Artie. Who has decided to stick with us for the time being until we hear back from the surface given the situation. Placing her bowl down she has a smile on her face. So good. Artie mused. Ah, thank you. Milhior said. Yeah, it was good. Gaul said. Stifling a yawn as he did so. And now time for some sleep. Hold up little brother we haven't decided on a guard schedule yet. Leon Michelli said. Which is true. Since even though the 18th floor doesn't spawn monsters they can still find their way here from the above or below floor easily. Not to mention other adventurers crawling around that wouldn't hesitate to try and loot us for all we're worth. Even if a safe zone the dungeon isn't truly safe. And given how fast we moved our asses here we didn't really have time to discuss minor things like a night watch schedule. Oh well. I'll take the first shift. I said. Oh no more X, you shouldn't. Leon Michelli spoke up. After all you're injured. I'm fine. I retorted. The medical treatment force people did has made the pain all but disappear. I explained. Which is true. Besides, I am the captain so I am saying I will take first watch. No one is going to stop me. If so, then I will also watch with you. Ryu spoke up. Sure. I said. Since it will give us a chance to have a proper talk about her behavior ever since I got injured. The others took note of how I wasn't going to budge so they just accepted things. Once they did everyone headed into their tents and got ready to sleep. Artie being in Milhior and Leon Michelli's shared tent. Rio has her own for obvious reasons. Elven pride is no laughing matter after all. She is not comfortable sleeping in such close proximity to others at all. But since she's our fellow familia member we are going to accommodate her. While everyone else drifted off into dreamland I looked up at the sparking crystals on the ceiling of the floor. Taking in their beauty. As well as doing my best to ignore Ryu's eyes on me. But after an hour passed and I didn't feel her gaze lessen I decided it was time for that chat I've been being to have with her. I turned in Ryu's direction and she quickly started looking elsewhere. Ryu, I know you've been staring at me this whole time. So please don't try and hide it. I told her. You're not very good at doing so anyway. As soon as I said this Rio looked at me. Okay. She said. Thank you. I said. So, want to explain your behavior? I don't know what you mean. Ryu retorted. Ryu you are not a very good liar. I told her. And I think you know exactly what I'm talking about. I said. Listen, accidents happen. But, you got injured because I messed up. Rio quickly retorted. You, you could have died, and it would have been all my fault. She said. Her voice shaking as she did so. No, Rio, it wouldn't have been your fault. I retorted. Yes, it would have dash. Before Rio could say anything more I moved her to her and flicked her forehead lightly. Enough of that. I told Ryu. Listen to me. I am an adventurer. Just like you. I know that a knife is resting on my throat literally every time I step into the dungeon. But I do it anyway because it is my choice. The same as you. Still dash. Still nothing. I said, cutting Ryu off. If one day I do die in the dungeon then at least I will have died doing what I wanted. No one is making come to this place. Certainly not you. So, don't take things all on yourself. 
It's not healthy and there is no need for you to do so. We're familia Rio, so that means you can lean on me and the others. Understand? Rio slowly nodded. Good. I told her. So let's put all this behind us. Also, I simply got injured this time. I didn't die. So we can both learn from this and be prepared better for the next time that situation arises, and I know there will be a next time. I said. Sound good? Yes. Rio said. Great. I told her. So enough with the heavy stuff let's do some stargazing, or crystal gazing in this case. What say you? Sure. Rio said. Excellent. I retorted. I then moved a bit closer to Ryu but not too close and started looking up at the crystals atop the floor roof, her doing the exact same thing. The moment becoming a bit magical. Third person, POV. As Morix and Ryu gazed up at the crystal ceiling of the 18th floor the leader of the Athena Familia had no idea he had just placed a seed in the heart of his elven friend. A seed that would one day bloom into a flower of love. The same for Rio, she herself had no idea a seed had been implanted in her by Morix. At least not for a while anyway. But when she did the relationship between the two would irreversibly change forever. As for what will happen after their relationship changes. Well, only time will tell. Chapter 40, Chapter 36, Reward Morex, POV Ryu and I continued gazing up at the crystals for three hours straight. Making small talk as we did so. Then before we knew it our watch shift ended. As soon as it did so I went over to Rogue and Gaul's shared tent and woke them up. Get up you two, time for a shift change. I sat inside of their tent. As soon as I did so they slowly but surely woke up and came out. Once they did Ryu went to her tent and I went to my own which I have since I am the captain. Being such has many benefits. Once inside my personal tent I slipped off my boots and then climbed into my cover and laid my bed down on my pillow. Immediately I went straight off to dreamland. A smile on my face as I did so. Hearing the flap of my tent open my eyes immediately shot open and I grabbed my spear, pointing it in the direction of the opening. Seeing Gaul as I did so. It's morning. He told me. Okay. I told him, lowering my spear as I did so. Gaul then left my tent. Once he did so I stretched and woke up for real. Then after I did so I put back on my boots and went outside the tent. Finding everyone sitting around a morning campfire enjoying some breakfast. Not wasting any time I went to get me some of that. It was delicious. Ah, that was good. I said. Finishing my food. I'm glad you liked it. Artie said. Oh, so you made it. I said. Artie nodded. Yes, it's the least I could. After all, you all have done so much for me already and I've done nothing to repay your kindness. It's fine, really. I retorted. If we had been in the same situation I'm sure you would have done the same for us. Yes. Artie said. Once she did so we cleaned up and then Artie, Rogue, Rio, and I headed back towards Rivera while the others remained at camp. Borst told us to return today to receive an update. Reaching the town we quickly made our way to town hall. The moment we arrived we saw Borst standing outside, several other adventurers surrounding him. Borst, my friend how are you today? I asked him. A stupid grin on my face as I did so. I'm good kid. He told me. Wait Bors, that kid. He's Glaucopes. One of the adventurers near him said, pointing at me. Yeah, it's true. I said. Seeing no reason to deny my alias. It's why I have it in the first place after all. What, you're a level two? Bors questioned me. I nodded. Sure am. I told him. So anyway, what's the latest on the matter we discussed yesterday? I asked him. 
Right. Bors said. Well, we contacted the surface and just got a response a little while ago. A party from the Ganesha Familia is on its way down, being led by Ankusha herself. He explained to us. Big sister. R.D. muttered. A complicated expression on her face. Right, I almost forgot Artie feels slightly inadequate when compared to Shakti. Though she has her own strengths. I'm sure she'll realize that eventually. How long until they reach here? Rogue asked. Two, three days tops. Bors retorted. We all nodded. Thanks for the information, Bors. I'll tell Ankusha and the Ganesha Familia how helpful you were to us. I told him. Bye. I said. Once I did so we four left the city and returned to our campsite. We then explained the situation to the others. That's great news. Reiner said. Especially since they will defeat Goliath on their way down here. Meaning we can pass back up to the surface without fear of said monster Rex. Yeah. Rogue added. I can't agree more. I said. So now that that's settled I am going to go and take a bath. I said. Since I stink something fierce. Dungeon diving it seems is the enemy of hygiene. Hearing my words the others and I shared a quick laugh. I then went to retrieve my supplies and headed to one of the nearby lakes to clean up and wash my clothes. Once I was done I returned to camp and the others decided to follow my example. Coming back looking completely refreshed and rejuvenated after their own baths. After this happened we simply went about letting our bodies recuperate from the dive to the 18th floor. Two days passing in the blink of an eye. Until finally Shakti and the others from the Ganesha Familia arrived. A adventure slash romance book in my hands I flipped to the next page. When all of a sudden I heard rustling in the nearby bushes. Closing my book I immediately picked up my spear resting at my side. The others collecting their weapons and joining me. However we let ourselves relax in the next second when Shakti appeared from the bushes, along with the members of the Ganesha familia she brought with her. The moment this happened Shakti's eyes landed on Artie. Big sister. Artie mused. I, I. Before Artie had a chance to really say anything Shakti closed the distance within seconds and then wrapped her little sister in one of the biggest embraces I've ever seen. A small stream of tears coming out of her eyes as she did so. Artie, I'm glad. I'm so glad you're safe. Shakti cried. Hugging her sister even tighter as she did so. Ah, wah. Artie cried. Tears beginning to stream out of her eyes as she hugged Shakti back. All her pain and trauma coming to the surface and flooding out. No one said a word as the sisters had their tender moment. Ten minutes passing before they stopped crying and separated, smiles on their faces as they did so. Once this happened Shakti came over to us and literally bowed her head. Thank you. Thank you all so much. She said. Raising her head a moment after she did so. It's no problem, really. I said. Yes, if we were in the same situation I'm sure Artie would do the same for us. Reiner spoke up. I am certain of that as well. Rio spoke. She definitely would. Shakti said. Smiling as she did so. Since that's just the kind of girl she is. Big sis. Artie said, a light blush on her cheeks. I am just speaking the truth Artie. Shaki said. Ignoring her sister's blushing face as she did so. So moving on, what would you all like as your reward? A.M., we don't need a reward. Gaul spoke up. Nonsense. Shakti retorted. You risked your own lives to save my little sister and a member of my familia at that. Even though you had no reason to. I know not many people who would do that. As such I see it only fitting you receive a reward. And I won't take no for an answer. She explained to us. Yep, I can tell she's serious right now. 
I shared a look with the others, who all simply looked back at me. So it seems they want me to decide on the reward. All right then. I took a few minutes to think about what we as the familia needed. Then when the answer came to me I spoke. If you would, can you please train us? I asked Shakti. Sorry, what? She questioned. I'm saying can you train us? I asked her again. I use a spear but I've never had any formal training, and I know you use one as well. Since you saved me once before. Ah, I'm sorry I don't remember. Shakti admitted. It's fine. I said. What I am saying is I remember how you handled your weapon at that time and would like to learn how to do the same. My friends would also like to sharpen their fighting skills, so that's why we want our reward to be training from Ganesha Familia members in combat. I explained. As I did so none of the others voiced objections, which means they are all fine with my idea. Are you absolutely sure you want that as your reward? Shakti asked us. Yes. I said. Given that we intend to fight Evelis, this will help us immensely. I spoke. Having no issue revealing our plans to take on Evelis to Shakti. I know she's one of the good ones in Ororio. Same with most of her familia members. I see. Shakti said. All right then. You shall receive training from the members of the Ganesha familia just as you have asked for. Thank you. I said. Also, if it's not too much trouble can you personally show me how to wield a spear? I asked Shakti. Since currently she is one of the best spear users in Ororio. I found this out some time ago. Leaning from her my skills will increase dramatically. It will also give me real experience in fighting against a superior opponent. Which will serve me greatly when going up against Evelis members in the future. Since while monsters are predictable, people are not. This combat training from the Ganesha Familia will help me and my fellow Familia members survive what is to come. It will also give me the added bonus of being able to get closer to Shakti. In my last life I quite liked her, and now that she is before me I've decided to make her my woman. While I still want Rio, I also want several other females. I'm going to create a harem. Why you ask? Ever since I've been reborn I've been asking myself a question. Is it wrong to pick up girls in a dungeon? After thinking about it over these past years I've decided it's not wrong at all. Every single day could be an adventurer's last. That's why so many of them try to live life to the fullest. Which is exactly what I promised myself I would do after being reborn. So that's why I'm going to pick up several girls in the dungeon and go all out before I die again. Enough said. A slash n, so here are the ages of some important characters. Years left until canon begins, 9. Current ages of the Athena Familia. Morax Lapis, 12 years old. Rio Lion, 12 years old. Gal Galette de Royce, 12 years old. Milhior Biscotti, 13 years old. Reiner Lute, 12 years old. Leon Michelli Galette de Royce, 15 years old. Rogue Cheney, 15 years old. Ardi Varma, 13 years old. Shakti Varma, 29 years old. Chapter 41, Chapter 37, Post Expedition. Stepping out of Babel Tower, I felt the sun on my face in what felt like the first time in forever. Even though it's only been two weeks. Dungeon diving really messes with your sense of time. I'll have to be wary about that in the future when the others and I go on even more expeditions and dive even deeper into the dungeon. But that will come later. Right now I just want to return home, get a shower, and then get a good sleep in a real bed. As I thought about my plans I noticed Shakti approaching us out of the corner of my eye. We decided to make our way up from the 18th floor with her and her group, just in case we ran into Evelis members along the way. We didn't thankfully. And we also didn't run into the Goliath because on their way down Shakti and her group killed it. Yet another reason I decided to ask them to train us. An alliance with them in the future wouldn't be so bad. 
even if Shakti doesn't become my woman. Though I am definitely going to give my all to make sure she does. Arriving in front of a Shakti slightly bowed her head again before raising it. Once again, thank you for saving Artie. You have my thanks. She said. Again Shakti, it's no problem. I told her. Okay then. Goodbye. Shakti said. She then walked back over to Artie and the other Ganesha Familia members. As she did we started making our way towards home. Arriving in front of our home we saw Kagaya and Ni nice standing outside. Their gazes moving across the immediate area, looking for any potential threats. But as soon as their gazes landed on us we they walked over. Welcome back. Ni nice said. Thanks. Lian Michelli responded. So, how was your first time exploring the middle floors? Kagaya asked. Everything you expected? Yes, and no. I said. Which caused Kagaya to raise a brow at me. I'll explain things later. Anyway, did anything happen while we were gone? Kagaya shook her head. No, nothing at all. Not to your home, Athena, or even in the city itself. She explained. Right. I told her, nodding as I did so. Well again, thanks. Also when you guys get ready to go on an expedition let us know. Then we will watch over Stardust Manor just like you watched over our home while we were gone. Since our two familia are allies it's only right we show the Astria familia the same courtesy and kindness they have shown us. Kaigaya nodded. Understood. Morax. I will tell Elise and Astria your message. By then. She said. Kagaya and Nis then turned and stared walking away. As they did so Reina opened up the front door. When she did Robe went up to her and wrapped her in a hug. Hi mom, we're back. He said. Reina reciprocating the hug. This lasted for a few seconds before they split apart and we all entered, closing the door behind us as we did so. As soon as we were inside Athena stood up from the couch she was sitting on and smiled at us. Welcome back my children. Thank you goddess. We all said in unison. So, did the expedition go well? Athena asked. About that. I said, moving closer to Athena. If it's not too much trouble we can go to your room and discuss things there? I asked her. Since the conversation I need to have with Athena is of a serious nature, and I would rather do it in a place where we won't be interrupted. I also don't want Reina to hear anything we are going to discuss. She's not an adventurer but a normal woman, who is kind. She doesn't need to hear any of the bloody details of our report, lest as make her worry for rogue safety even more than we all know she already does. Hearing my question Athena simply nodded. Once she did so we started heading up to her room. While the others began having a meeting of their own. Namely sorting out all the magic stones and drop items we collected during our two weeks in the dungeon. Which is quite a bit. However all that money won't go in our personal pockets. Since running a familia is just like running a business. We have to pay fees to the guild. Not to mention deduct cost for weapons and armor repair, potions, food, and other supplies. Yeah, Danmachi isn't all adventuring and fighting. Normal aspects of life still go on here. The only difference is in this world there is magic, elves, dwarves, and a bunch of other things. And, it is what it is. Getting to Athena's room I closed the door. I then took up my salamander cloak and placed it on the chair I was using, while also leaning my spear against the wall. Once I did this and sat down I immediately began going over the details of the expedition with Athena. Including everything about Artie and our deal to receive training from Shakti and the Ganesha Familia. Overall it took me 30 minutes to explain. As I finished I leaned back in the chair and released a heavy sigh. Man, that was a mouthful. I thought. But as I talked Athena didn't interrupt me at all. She simply listened to all I had to say. I see. She said. 
well I am glad you all are alright. Also, getting training from the Ganesha Familia wasn't a bad call to make. I must say Morax, you are doing very well in your job as captain. Athena said. A smile appearing on her face as she did so. Thank you goddess. I told her. So, is there anything else you require from me? Not at the moment. Athena said. So you can go ahead and take a rest. You deserve it. Thank you. I said. But before I do, mind checking my status? But of course. Athena said. As soon as she did so I removed my armor and shirt and then turned around in the chair, my back facing Athena. A moment after I did so I felt something touch my back and then a faint glow appeared out of the corner of my eyes. Then after another minute or so it faded, Athena handing me a sheet of paper afterwards with my new status. I looked at it immediately. Name, Morax Lapis. Level, 2. Strength, G268 G298. Endurance, G244 G269. Dexterity, G226 G245. Agility, G271 F300. Magic, F303 F326. Magic. Geoforce, allows the user to create and manipulate earth constructs such as weapons. The more complex the constructs are the faster mind is drained. Chant, ground and soil, heed my command and come forth. Slot 2? Slot 3? Skills. Geo Archon, increases the effect and power of any earth-based magic. It also doubles the user's strength and agility stats anytime they are in combat within rocky terrain. This allows one to be able to sense people within a 50-meter radius upon rocky terrain, but only if they are part of one's familia. Gaia's Embrace, when inside of rocky terrain the user's mind and physical stamina is actively but slowly restored faster than normal. Developmental Abilities Hunter, Rank I Yes. I silent cheered, looking at my new status. My agility has finally reached rank F, and it looks like my strength is almost there as well. My other stats also look good. After I finished examining my status sheet I handed it to Athena who quickly disposed of it. I then got redressed and headed straight for my room. Where I then stripped down my birthday suit and jumped into the shower. A smile on my face as the hot water washed all the dirt and grime from the dungeon off of me. Feels good. Chapter 42, Chapter 38, Post-Expedition Part 2 Third Person, POV Sitting in his room Morax looked over the paperwork on his desk in front of him. In his pajamas as he did so. Night has finally come around. After his shower earlier he went downstairs to assist the others in doing post-expedition work. With all of them working together they finished it easily. Even so as the captain he has taken it upon himself to double-check everything. So after dinner that is exactly what he started doing. But now he is almost done. And it has only taken him 15 minutes to go back over everything. That is because Morax has found no mistakes so far in his reviewing of the post-expedition work. Meaning he and his fellow Familia members did things right the first time around. A fact that has brought a small smile to Morax's face. Placing down the last piece of paperwork he stacked it neatly and then got up from his desk chair and stretched. Once he was done he moved over to his bed and then slipped under the covers, heading straight off into dreamland. But while Morax did this, his comrades were having their statuses checked by their goddess Athena. As just like him, they wanted to know where they stood in terms of development and power now that their first expedition had come to a close. Sitting in a chair with her back to Athena Leon Michelli waited until her status check was done. After discussing things with the others it was decided she would go first, since she is the vice-captain. A position she takes very seriously despite not really showing it. Even so Leon Michelli won't ever disregard the trust her comrades have placed in her. She'll go above and beyond for them. Since she never wants anyone she cares about to die while she is helpless to do anything about it ever again. Not like with her parents and the Bast Familia. 
As Leah Michelli thought about her personal resolve to protect her fellow Familia members Athena handed her her status sheet. The moment it was between her fingers she read it. Name, Leon Michelli Galette de Royce. Level, 2. Strength, G288 F313. Endurance, G272 F305. Dexterity, G233 G256. Agility, G229 G243. Magic, I0. Magic. Slot 1? Slot 2? Slot 3? Skills. Weapons Master, increases all of the user's base stats by half when they are fighting against an opponent wielding the same weapon as them. Night Vision, allows one to see perfectly in dim lit areas and even pitch black darkness as if it were daytime. Development Abilities. Hunter Rank I. Looking at her status sheet Leon Michelli put a smile on her face. Not only at the increase of her stats across the board, but also at her new skill. Weapons Master? Unlike her brother Gull who prefers to use his fist in battle Leon Michelli decided to go the opposite route and focus on weapons, learning all she can about various kinds and working to gain some proficiency in them. Now her hard work is bearing fruit in the form of a skill. Yes. Leon Michelli said. Then once she finished looking over her status sheet she gave it to Athena who disposed of it. As she did this Leon Michelli out back on her shirt and left the goddess's room. Sending in the next person after she did so. Her brother Gaul. Moving to take a sit in the chair he removed his shirt and let Athena check his status. As he did so he thought about to the recent expedition in the dungeon. Specifically when he faced off against the fire-breathing attack of the hellhounds. Faster, I need to get faster. Gaul thought. Although he grumbled about not having magic he knew that doing so would change nothing. Either way he was going to dive into the dungeon with his sister and their fellow familia members. Facing off against monsters that were a bad matchup for his fighting style time and time again. That's why Gaul has been thinking of ways to overcome his weaknesses, and one of the answers he came up with is speed. Closing in on monsters with long distance attacks before they even have a chance to launch them. This is one of the answers Gaul has come up with to progress and become stronger to face the dangers of the dungeon. After a minute passed Athena handed him his status sheet and he looked over it. Name, Gaul Galette de Royce. Level, 2. Strength, G280 F310. Endurance, G275 F300. Dexterity, G225 G241. Agility, G240 G265. Magic, I0. Magic. Slot 1? Slot 2? Slot 3? Skills. Night vision, allows one to see perfectly in dim lit areas and even pitch black darkness as if it were daytime. Developmental abilities. Fist strike, rank I. Looking at his status sheet Gull nodded, knowing exactly which direction he wanted to take in his development to get stronger. Once he was done looking over his status sheet he handed it to Athena who disposed of it while he redressed. He then left, sending in Milhior. As Athena began checking her status Milhior thought back to the expedition's first major battle on the 14th floor, where she almost suffered a mind down from using her magic. She does not want that to happen again. So she will work on controlling the output of mind in her spells from now on. Not only for self-improvement but to not drag down her comrades in the future. As Athena handed Milhior her status sheet she looked over it. Name, Milhior Biscotti. Level, 2. Strength, G278 G299. Endurance, G282 F311. Dexterity, G265 F304. Agility, G243 G269. Magic, G255 G279. Magic. Battle Cry, an attack type magic which turns Milhior's voice into a sonic scream able to disorient enemies and rupture their eardrums. As well kill them from the inside out in some cases. Chant, taste my screams of fury my enemies. Slot 2? Slot 3? Skills. 
developmental abilities, lung capacity, rank I. Description allows one to increase their lung capacity by using their voice for long periods of time such as with activities like singing and others. This in turn allows them to hold massive amounts of air in their lungs for long periods of time. Disregarding the need to breathe in some cases. Looking at her status sheet Milhur nodded. And just like the others she handed it to Athena who disposed of it. Before leaving. Sending in the next person. Ryu. As Athena began checking her status Rhea thought back to the conversation she had with Morix during their first night on floor 18. Just as he suggested she was going to get better and stronger so that she can protect not only herself but her precious friends as well. On another note when Ryu remembered that night stargazing with Morix she got another feeling in her chest. A strange feeling that she had never felt before in her entire life. However just as it appeared it vanished. So Ryu didn't think much of it. Little did she know that feeling would return in the future, and stronger as well. As Athena handed Ryu her status sheet she began looking over it. Name, Ryu Lion. Level, 2. Strength, G231 G241. Endurance, G244 G256. Dexterity, G279 F305. Agility, G288 F313. Magic, G275 G291. Magic. No a heal, a healing type magic which heals the target's wounds and restores stamina, though it takes time for the magic to take effect. Effect rises in forested areas. Chant, the song of a now distant forest. The nostalgic song of life. Please bring the mercy of healing to those that seek you. Slot 2? Slot 3? Skills. Arrow mana, increases attack power the faster the user is running. Developmental abilities. Hunter, rank I. Once Ryu got a good look at her status sheet she handed it to Athena, who disposed of it. Ryu then left her room and sent in Rogue. As he sat down in the chair and let Athena check his status he remembered the monsters on the middle floors specifically their power, and how he struggled against them. Of course the others struggled as well, but Rogue had an even tougher time since he is still only a level 1. A fact he knew quite well. I can't stay like this. Rogue thought. He doesn't want to drag his friends down, so he is going to level up as soon as possible as to not be a burden. Once Athena handed Rogue his status sheet he looked over it. Name, Rogue Cheney. Level, 1. Strength, E405 E445. Endurance, E468 D501. Dexterity, E424 E469. Agility, E413 E450. Magic, I0. Magic. Slot 1. Slot 2. Slot 3. Skills. Warrior of the Night, when it is nighttime Rogue's agility, dexterity, and endurance stats all increase by double until sunrise. Developmental Abilities None As Rogue looked at his status sheet his eyes went wide for a second. Noticing this Athena put a small smile on her face. Surprised? She asked him. Yes. Rogue answered since he didn't expect his stats to get such high a jump. Well, that's to be expected. Athena said. This is your first time experiencing the greater quality of Excalia you obtain from fighting monsters above your level. Athena explained. And you did so for two weeks on the middle floors. So this doesn't surprise me in the slightest. Even so, don't let this sudden jump make you cocky rogue. Of course Athena. Rogue said. He is not going to get arrogant just because he has become a little stronger. But that's not to say he is not happy. Handing his status sheet to Athena Rogue left as she disposed of it. As he did so he began pondering how to improve himself. My sword handling skills need work. Rogue thought. As he did so a picture of Kagaya appeared in his mind. But when it did he quickly shook his head. What the hell, 
Why did she of all people come to mind? Rogue Mu Kagaya is a skilled katana user, but ever since they met they have been like oil and water. They just don't mix well. Which is what Rogue thinks for now. Despite getting a faint blush on his cheeks the moment Kagaya appeared in his mind. As Rogue left Athena's room Reiner entered, the last one to get his status checked and updated. Which he doesn't mind. After all he knows exactly what he needs to improve on. Getting better with his magic, simple as that. Sitting in the chair Reiner allowed Athena to check his status, and then viewed the sheet when she handed it to him. Name, Reiner Lute. Level, 2. Strength, G235 G242. Endurance, G244 G258. Dexterity, G270 G285. Agility, G281 F302. Magic, G290 F320. Magic. Izuchi, allows the user to conjure forth lighting and direct it and shape it at their will. Chant, what I seek is thunder, Izuchi. Slot 2? Slot 3? Skills. High Magus, increases the power, range, and attack strength of any of the user's magic. As well speeds up the recovery of their mind, generally preventing mind down unless they are in dire straits. Developmental Abilities Mage, Rank I Looking at his status sheet Reiner saw it was about what he expected. Once he was done he handed it back to Athena and she disposed of it. As he left her room the goddess leaned back on her bed, a soft smile on her face. Although her children didn't say anything to her, she can all see on their faces they are thinking of ways to get stronger and improve themselves. Which as a goddess is basically all she wants. Looks like coming to the mortal world was the right decision after all. Athena mused. After she did so she moved to go to sleep. Her familia members doing the same thing. That night the entire Athena familia had sweet dreams. A slash n, so chapters like this won't appear often. But they will still come out. Since I feel I need to show this is not just about Morix the MC but the Athena familia as a whole. Chapter 43, Chapter 39, Training and Fresh Blood. Morex, POV. Receiving a kick to the face I briefly flew through the air before crashing onto the ground. Hard. Ugh. I groaned out. Picking myself up off the ground as I did so. My training spear in hand. Since that is what I am doing right now, training. As for my opponent, it is none other than Shakti. Six months have passed since our first expedition into the dungeon, and a new year has begun. In this time not only have we gone on two more expeditions to the 18th floor and back, but Rogue has also managed to level up to two. Which he did by fighting against and defeating a group of minotaurs numbering 10 all by himself three months ago on the 15th floor. I know since I saw it firsthand. Thanks to that he broke past the barrier, and is now level 2 like the rest of us but that won't be for long. Since despite the training we are receiving from Shakti and the Ganesha familia, as well as several other things the familia is attending to as a whole the rest of us are close to reaching level 3. And pretty soon we will go on another adventure and do so. I can't wait. But that's for later. Standing to my feet I turned to face Shakti. As I did so she looked at me with a stern expression like always since we began our training months ago. Her own training spear in her left hand, with a whip in her right hand. Since Shakti is a competent monster tamer, and can use the whip easily in battle alongside her spear. A fact which once I learned I asked her to do when we trained together. Since the tougher the training is the faster I will improve, and the more I will learn. Are you ready to continue? Shakti asked. Yes. I told her. As soon as I did so Shakti took her whip and flicked it in the direction of my spear, intending to remove it from my grasp. When she did so I jumped back. That's when she herself moved forward and began sending several thrusts my way using her own spear. As she did so I parried her blows, while making sure to keep an eye on her whip. Since several times before during training she has literally tripped me up with it when she's gotten in close to fight me spear to spear. 
I continued parrying Shakti's blows. Then as I saw her right wrist move ever so slightly I jumped backwards. Avoiding a lash from her whip that would have knocked me off my feet had it connected. As Shakti's whip moved through the air I stepped forward, and then stepped on the whip itself stopping it in its tracks. The sudden stop of her attack caused Shakti to move forward, but she didn't stumble in the slightest. Instead she said perfectly upright and closed the distance to me. As she did I thrust my spear forward several times, but she used the shaft of her weapon to deflect each of my blows without fail. Reaching me she moved to swing her shaft into my side, but when she did I used the shaft of my own spear to block her attack. Standing my ground as I did so. Seeing this Shakti put a smile on her face. Good, you're improving. Of course I am. And it's all because I have a great and pretty teacher like you Shakti. I told her. Didn't I tell you to stop that? Shakti said. She's referring to my complimenting her. Which I've done ever since she started training me. Shakti is not a dumb. I've made it pretty clear I'm interested in her as a woman over these past few months. Even if I won't be able to make a move on her physically for another two to three years. Despite this she isn't showing any interest in me at all. She won't even blush at the compliments I give her. Which makes me want her all the more. You did. But I'm just speaking the truth. You are pretty. I told Shakti. This time she didn't respond. Instead Shakti moved her left leg and swept mine out from under me, causing me to land on my back. Just after I did Shakti placed the tip of her spear on my neck. Do you concede? She asked. Yes. I told her. Once I did so Shakti took the spear away from my neck. She then offered a hand to me which I took and she then pulled me to my feet. My, what soft hands you have. I told Shakti. Not even responding she took her hand away from me and gave me a stern glare before walking off. Oh, looks like you still aren't getting anywhere with sis. Sucks to be you Morix. Artie said, walking up to me with a cheeky grin on her face. In these past few months she's become friends with me and the others in the Athena familia. Well sure. I'm not getting anywhere right now. But in a few years your sister is going to be one of my women. Just watch. I responded to Artie. Yeah, yeah, keep telling yourself that. She retorted. Her grin getting wider as she did so. Whatever. I said. I then walked over to the training rack and placed my practice spear on it. I then moved to get a towel to wipe the sweat off my body, Artie making comments about my failed attempts to woo her sister as I did so. But I don't mind. Not at all. Since that's just Artie's personality. Which I find refreshing. As I finished cleaning myself off I moved to take a seat on a bench and waited until the others completed their training for the day. Right now we are at the Ganesha Familia compound. Looking at them I nodded. It's clear, all our skills are definitely improving. Fifteen minutes passed until everyone else finished up their own training. Once they did we left the Ganesha Familia compound, Artie showing us the way out as usual. She really is a sweet girl. That's why I'm definitely not going to let her get that shitty death like in the original timeline. Besides, if I can't protect the younger sister of one of my future women then what kind of man am I? So Morax, I see you were trying to seduce the captain of the Ganesha Familia again? Ryu spoke up. Turning to her I nodded. Yep, I sure was. I said without a hint of shame. But no matter what I do she won't even blush. I sighed. Looks like I really will have to wait a few more years before she takes my advances seriously. As I said this Ryo gave me a deadpan stare. Something to say Ryo? I asked her. No. She replied. Oh. I mused, getting a slight grin on my face. Are you sure? Yes. Ryu responded. Really, you're not jealous or anything like that are you? I asked her. 
Of course not. Rio said. But since she turned her head away from me when she did so I can tell she's not being completely honest. Rio can't lie to save her life. At least not in a casual situation like this. Rio, it's okay to be honest. I told her. If you want I can start complimenting you as well. After all while Shakti is the allure of a mature woman, it doesn't compare to the beautiful fairy features you carry. I said with a straight face. And I mean it. Rio is truly beautiful. Again, she's also totally my type. Since my preference back in my last life was for cool beauties just like her. I also enjoyed older sister and older ladies types as well since I wanted them to spoil me a little bit. At my words Ria's ears became red. Oh, is someone happy? I asked her. No. Ryu shouted. But more in embarrassment than anger. Morax, to think you were a sadist all this time. Rogue commented. How harsh Rogue, I'm not a sadist. I told him. Then why are you bullying poor Ryu right now? Leon Michelli asked me. I am not bullying her. I am simply complimenting her on her appearance without any hesitation. I retorted. So not a sadist but simply a bit of a pervert. Rogue said. Well, yes. I said. I am a bit of a pervert. But say Rogue, if we're talking about my relationships then let's talk about yours. Specifically the one between you and a certain black-haired female samurai from the Astria Familia. I said, getting a grin on my face. I am of course talking about Kagaya. Despite her and Rogue having verbal spats all the time I can't help but feel there is something else going on between them. No comment. Rogue said. Come on, you can tell us. I said. No comment. Rogue said again. And oh look, we're home. Okay, I'll let you off the hook this time. I said. As I did so we entered our home. Seeing Athena sitting on the couch waiting for our return as usual. Welcome back everyone. Athena told us. We gave our greetings in return. So I have some news. We're getting some new members to the familia. Hearing this we all stopped in our tracks and looked directly at Athena. Since she definitely has some explaining to do. Chapter 44, Chapter 40, New Recruits The moment Athena mentioned new members joining the familia we all looked towards her, waiting for an explanation. Since this is the first any of us are hearing of this. Athena, please explain? Milhior asked. Sure. Athena said. So for the past month I've been sorting through applications of those wishing to join our familia sent to us by the guild. She said. Making us all widen our eyes in surprise. Though not about the involvement of the guild. A few months ago we decided to inform the guild we were openly looking for applicants to join our familia, so they made all the necessary arrangements on our behalf like they do with the other familia in the city. However since then we never got anyone wishing to join us. But from what Athena is saying it looks like things are changing. Wait, so people actually applied to join us? Gaul questioned. Athena nodded. Yes, they sure did. It was not many but we did get some. She explained. Then why are we only hearing about this just now if you don't mind me asking? Reiner questioned. Not at all. Athena said. You've all been so busy. Going to the dungeon, training, working to level up and handling other business I decided not to add to your plate. That's why I did this by myself. She explained to us. All right then. I said. The others nodding their heads in agreement. Athena is our goddess, and since she wanted to handle this matter herself it's not our place to object. Though I do wish she had informed me. I am the captain of the familia after all. I'll need to bring that up with her later. I thought. So, how many new members are we getting? Leon Michelli asked. 
I've chosen three who I wish to join us from among the applicants. Athena said. But I haven't met them in person yet. Actually that is the reason I am telling you all about this today. The three new recruits will be coming here in two days' times for their final interview to see if they truly belong in our familia. And I would like all of you to be here. No problem. We all said in unison. There is no way we are skipping this meeting. Not only do we need to get a feel for our new potential comrades, but we also need to keep Athena safe. Just in case any of the three applicants she picked decided to try something funny should they be rejected. Thank you all. Athena said. We simply nodded. All of us then started heading toward our rooms. But before I made it up the stairs Athena came up beside me and whispered. Sorry, I'll inform you next time. You are the captain after all. She said. The moment she did so my eyes went wide, and I looked at her. But she only has a smile on her face. Even though she literally just read my mind. Gods truly are scary. I thought. Giving Athena a curt nod I continued heading towards my room. Wondering exactly what these three potential recruits were like. Two days passed in the blink of eye. Sitting with the others in the living room I waited for the selected applicants to arrive. Time seemed to pass slowly, until finally we heard a knock on the front door. Knock knock. Getting up from the chair she was sitting in Athena moved to answer it. Opening the door she put a smile on her face. Please, come in. She said. As she did so three people entered into our home, Athena closing the door behind them. Once inside I began observing each one of them, knowing a little bit about each of them thanks to Athena sharing their applications with us two days ago after she announced this meeting. The first one to stand in front of us a male. He is 20 years old with long blonde hair and dark eyes. As well as a handsome face and pointed ears. Image here. His name is William Massachusetts. I am not lying, that is literally his name. Which made it a bit more difficult not to laugh at it when I first heard it. Considering Massachusetts is a real place in my last life unlike in this world. Moving on. William is a half-elf. He's never been a part of a familia before, but growing up he learned archery and tracking. Looking at us William put a bit of a smirk on his face. That is until his eyes landed on Ryu and he slightly frowned. But it was only for a moment then his facial features went blank. That is definitely something that needs to be addressed. I thought. If William has a problem with other elves then he'll need to work it out because we will not tolerate any infighting in the familia. Moving on. The second person to enter after William is another male. He is 17 years old with blood red hair that is kept in a single ponytail behind his head. He also had bangs framing his face and blood red eyes, and is quite handsome as well. And I'm secure enough in my manhood to admit that. Image here. His name is Dilek Ragnvinder. From what his application said he's a skilled swordsman, which I believe given the claymore sword he is currently carrying on his back. The way he carries himself tells me he knows how to use his weapon. As for the last person to enter it is a female. She is 16 years old with pure white skin and matching long white hair that goes all the way down to her but her eyes are midnight black. Image here. Her name is Echidna Dona. And unlike William and Dilek she has already received Falna. Turns out Echidna grew up in the country of magic, Altina, and was a member of the Hecate Familia during her childhood. Because of this she is already a level 2. I would say we hit the jackpot but... She is sort of scaring me. Because ever since Echidna came into the house she's had this strange smile on her face that is sending a bit of a shiver down my spine when I look at it. Though I'm sure it's probably nothing. I hope. Once the door was closed Athena moved back to her seat. She then looked at our three potential recruits. So once again, thank you all for coming here today. I am the goddess Athena and those you see in the room with you are my children, who will be your fellow familia members should we choose to accept you into our ranks today. Now then, let's get these interviews started.
Who would like to go first? Athena spoke. I will. William spoke up. He then stepped forward, officially beginning the interview process. Chapter 45, Chapter 41, Interviews As soon as we asked who wanted to go first with the final interviews for joining the familia William stepped forward. Hello. I said. My name is Morax Lapis, and I am the captain of the Athena Familia. I spoke to William. Looking at his face to gauge his reaction as I did so. Since if he has an issue with me being captain just because I am younger than him then I will automatically disqualify him from being part of the familia. No matter what anyone else says. I have no time to deal with such petty bullshit. Not when I am responsible for the lives of my fellow familia members due to the trust they decided to place in me to lead them. I see. William said. His facial expression not changing in the slightest. Well then, nice to meet you. He said. The same. I said. So then, why do you want to join our familia? I asked him. No point in beating around the bush after all. I want to be an adventurer. William responded. As he did so I gave him a deadpan stare. I know that. I am asking you why you want to join our familia? Truth is I'm not really a fan of a lot of people, and I've seen how some of the gods act since coming to Orario a few weeks ago. Basically, their behavior disgusted me. William said, a grimace on his face. One that I can understand. Some of the gods I've seen around Orario not mentioned in the original story truly disgust me as well. That's why I try to avoid them at all cost. Otherwise I might do something I regret. So I asked around, and have only heard good things about the Athena Familia. That's why I want to join you guys. William said. Besides, I'm sure my archery skills would serve the group well. He said, a bit of a smug grin on his face as he did so. I see. Athena said. Well thank you for sharing William. She said. That concludes the interview but before the next person comes up to speak does anyone have any questions for William? Yes. Ryu spoke up. Do you have an issue with me? She bluntly asked him. Oh, Ryu. I thought. Wanting to chastise her the moment she spoke up. Although her straightforwardness is one of her best qualities, it is also one of her qualities that can make things difficult in certain situations. Like right now. I was going to talk to William about the frown he gave her later in private if we decided to accept him into the familia. But now thanks to our resident fairy-faced elf that idea has just been yeeted out the window. The moment Rio spoke up William looked directly at her. No, no problem with you particularly at all. He told her. Grumbling a bit as he did so. It doesn't sound like you mean what you just said. Rio spoke. Oh no, I thought. This situation feels like it's about to from awkward to bad any second now. Seeing this I moved to stop it, only for Athena to look at me and shake her in a no motion. I wanted to question her, but decided not to and instead trust her. So I didn't move from my spot. No matter how much I want to right now. TCH, typical elf. William muttered. What do you mean? Ryu asked, a bit of anger in her voice as she did so. What do I mean? William questioned. I am talking about your high and mighty attitude of course. He said, causing Ryu's eyes to widen for a moment. All of your pure-blooded elves are all the same. Always thinking you're better than everyone else, even us who have human blood. Well I'm tired of it. He said. That's why I'm going to become an adventurer and reach the very top. That show you pure blood's a thing or two. Silence descended in the room as William finished speaking. You can hear a pin drop right now. The tension is also becoming thicker as the seconds go by. Glancing at Athena I saw she still didn't make any moves to do anything at all about what just happened, so I decided to keep following her lead. Hoping that I am making the right choice by doing so. 
Tell me, do you hate me? Ryu asked William after a few minutes passed. I don't hate you. He responded. And I can tell he is being truthful. I see. Ryu said. Then if that is the case can I have the chance to show you that not all pure-blood elves look down on other races and half-bloods? She asked him. When she did so William lightened his eyes in shock. He probably never expected a pure-blood elf to say such a thing, but Rio is not a normal elf like most who come to Aura Rio to become adventurers. I don't know what William has experienced in his life with elves up until now but I hope he's open to change. Sure. William said. So, how about we start right now? Kindly take off your mask please? He asked her. Sign right now Ryu is wearing her mask. Once William asked her question a moment passed without Ryu saying anything. Then she reached up and pulled down her mask with little hesitation, revealing her face for everyone to see. My name is Ryu Lion, a pleasure. She said. Showing a smile as she did so. Seeing this William once again became speechless, and he's not the only one. The other applicants are mesmerized by Ryu's face as well. But that's too expected, since she is a top-grade beauty. Thank you. William said. He then slightly bowed his head. Also sorry, sometimes I can get a bit heated. He told us, raising his head up after he did so. It is fine. Athena said. So then, will the next candidate please step forward? When she did so William stepped back and Dilek stepped up. Hello. My name is Dilek Rangviner. He said. Greetings Dilek. I said. So then, why do you wish to join our familia? I wish to protect the innocent. And I heard you all do that, is it true? He asked me. Yes. I said. When we're not training, resting, or dungeon diving we regularly go around Aura Rio and patrol the streets. Dealing with criminals and other scum as we do. We're not as good as the Ganesha Familia or the Astria Familia but we do all right. Honestly at first we only had the goal of fighting Ebelus, but after seeing other people in the same situation as Rogue and his mother we all came to the decision we couldn't just sit back and watch shit like that happen. So since we have the power to do something about it we are. Simple as that. Excellent. Dilek said. It's rare to find people who will stand up for others no questions asked. And that is why I wish to join you. He said. Okay. But you know we simply don't keep innocence safe. We are an exploration type familia that has the goal of reaching the deepest parts of the dungeon someday. I explained to Dilek. I am also fine with that. Dilek said, a glint appearing in his eyes as he said. Okay then. Athena said. That concludes the interview. Any questions for Dilek? No one spoke up. Next please. Athena said. As she did so Dilek stepped back and then Echidna stepped up. The strange smile from before still on her face. My, what a diverse group you have here. Echidna spoke up. Humans, an elf, Chianthrope, and even two cat people. Yes, you are quite the interesting familia. She mused. Fufufu, interesting indeed. As Echidna's smile got wider as she muttered to herself I put a wry smile on my face. Ignoring the strange laughter coming from her. Yes, we are diverse as you said. I spoke up. Which caused Echidna to look directly at me. Her black eyes staring directly into my mind. This is probably going to give me a nightmare or two but whatever. So Echidna, why do you wish to join us? I asked her. I mean you are already a level 2, and I'm sure there are more prominent familias that would take you in, so why us? Well, it's because I want to have some excitement. Echidna told me. Sorry, come again? I asked her. Excitement. Echidna repeated, placing a hand on her cheek as she did so. The excitement that come with facing death on almost a daily basis. 
Back home in Altina, I never got TP experience this. The Hecate Familia was so big, and the monsters so weak it was easy for us to kill them. All too easy, and so damn boring. I got tired of that, and so I came to Oro Rio to experience the rush of putting my life on the line. The pure ecstasy that comes with overcoming a dangerous situation. The feeling of knowing I can die at any moment if I am not careful. Ah, I want to experience it. Echidna said. As she went on her cheeks started getting pink and she started breathing heavily and weirdly as well. Oi, oi, oi. I thought upon seeing this. Just what kind of pervert is she? Although she looks cute the outside obviously doesn't match the inside at all. Not one bit. This girl sounds crazy from the way she is talking right now. Glancing at the others I saw them all looking in any direction but at Echidna, even Dilek and William aren't looking at her right now. The only ones that are are Athena and Reiner. Seeing this I simply sighed and turned my gaze back to Echidna. Who finally calmed down from her rant after I did so. Excuse me, I got a little excited there. Echidna said. A little. I thought. But chose not to say anything. Since her whole act just now made the mood of Hiroom a bit awkward. It's fine. I said. Anyway, we heard what you said. Yes, we have. Athena added. So with that that interviews are concluded. She stood up. Give me and my familia members a few moments to discuss what we just heard amongst ourselves and we'll let you know if you are going to accept you or not. Dilek, William, and Echidna nodded at Athena's words. Once they did so she turned to the rest of us. Now then, I need a volunteer to watch over these three. I'll do it. Milhior said. Thank you Millie. Athena told her. Now then, everyone else follow me. She said. Athena then headed towards the stairs and the rest of us followed her. Entering her room a few moments later. As she took a seat on the bed we began discussions on whether we should let Dilek, William, and Echidna becoming part of our familia. A slash n, hey Evie one, it's me your favorite author. So I'd been getting into Tensei Slime recently and decided to write a fanfiction about it in the near future. Only thing is I'm having trouble deciding which way to go. So let's put it to a vote. 1. MC Reborn in Tensei Slime as an elemental who becomes a demon lord. 2. MC Reborn in Tensei Slime as a human, eventually Bekaminga true hero. Cast your votes. Chapter 46, Chapter 42, New Members Inside of Athena's room all of us, besides Milhior who was looking after our guests, began a discussion on whether we should let Echidna, Dilek, and William into the familia. I started things off. So, first up William. I said. If I'm being honest he is a bit arrogant. Rogue spoke up. Leon Michelli nodded her head in agreement. Yeah, I feel the same way. In the dungeon we can't have that sort of attitude. I know. I said. But I think once William experiences the dungeon for real for the first time that arrogance he has will die down. That's why I'm okay with him joining the familia. I said. I feel the same. Reiner spoke up. As do I. Ryu said. Which caused the others expect me, Reiner, and Athena to look at her with surprise on their faces. Rio, are you sure considering how he acted towards you earlier? Leon Michelli asked. She nodded. I am. Rio said. I myself know better than anyone how arrogant pure-blooded elves can be. Especially where half-elves are concerned. She said. I have no idea what William has gone through where elves are concerned but I want to try and change his opinion. That's why I'm okay with him joining the familia. She explained. Putting a smile on her face as she did so. Well, all right then. Leon Michelli said. All right, so I guess he's in. Rogue said. Then it's decided. Athena said. William is joining the familia. 
Okay, next up is Dalek. I said. Well, he seems all right. Gaul spoke. Yes, he does. Rogue added. Yeah, and I think I could have some good sparring matches with him considering that sword he carries. Leon Michelli added, a grin on her face. I just hope he knows how to use it. That's what she said. I thought. But chose not to say it out loud to avoid getting punched in the face. I'm fine with him joining. Reiner said. So it's agreed then, Dalek is in as well. I said. Yes, I believe so. Athena said, smiling. All right, that's two. I said. Now then on to the last candidate. Echidna. No. Rogue, Rio, and Leon Michelli said at the exact same time. When they did so I put a wry smile on my face. Come on guys. I said. Sure she's a bit eccentric, but then again aren't most who wish to become adventurers? I asked them. Yes, but most don't have black eyes that look like they don't have a soul behind them. Rogue retorted. Also, she's definitely a pervert. Leon Michelli said. And I'm pretty sure she's black-hearted as well. When she looked at me I felt as if I was being licked all over. Ryu said. Shivering and using her hands to rub her body in a protective manner as she did so. Okay, I'll admit all that is true. I said. But even so I think she would be a great addition to the familia. I said. I think so as well. Reiner added. I'm pretty sure she's a magic user just like me, and I'm damn sure she's more knowledgeable than me. He admitted. That's why allowing her to join the familia would be good for all of us. Just think of the things she can teach us about magic. Which is true, since even here the goddess Hecate is known as an expert in magic, and most of her familia members are magic users. Actually they are called the best in the world. In Orario I think only Riveria and Hadine Seland of the Freya familia can hold a candle to those mages in the Hecate familia. I'm fine with letting her join. Gaul spoke up. Sure she's a bit strange but aren't all of us? I don't see an issue so long as she's got our backs. As he spoke Leon Michelli, Rogue, and Ryu all sighed. I suppose it would be all right. Ryu said. Maybe, she can join. Rogue spoke. Damn it, fine. Leon Michelli sighed. I'll give my approval. Good, then it's decided. Athena said. All three of them are joining us. We all nodded in agreement. Once we did so we left Athena's room to tell Dilek, William, and Echidna the good news. But the moment we arrived back in the living room we came upon a sight. Echidna rubbing Milhior's ears and tail, the latter having a flushed face. Fufufu, that's right my pink little pouch enjoy my touch. Echidna whispered in Milhior's ears. No, stop. She said, moaning as she did so. Seeing this I am left speechless. Hey, what the hell are you doing? Leon Michelli shouted. She then rushed over and removed Echidna from Milhier faster than my eyes could follow. Putting a smile on her face Echidna looked at Leon Michelli's angry expression without the slightest bit of remorse at all. Oh please calm down it was just a bit of fun. Echidna said. Besides, we're going to be fellow familia members right so some skinship is okay, right? She asked, licking her lips in a seductive manner. Her eyes then turned to Ryo, who jumped and hid behind me after they did. Once again I am left speechless. Deciding to put Echidna's perverted nature aside for the moment I looked at her, along with William and Dilek. Ignoring the latter two's nosebleeds which are not surprising since they just witnessed the joy known as Yuri. So we've talked it over, and come to a decision. All three of you are welcome to join our familia if you want. I said. Yes, I will. Blyak said. As will I. William added. Fufufu, or course it would be my pleasure. Echidna added. So with this our familia has grown even bigger.
which makes me both happy and scared at the same time. Eh, I'm sure it'll be fine. So I've decided about my Tenshura story. I'm going to write one about a true hero. But it won't come out for a while. Also I'm going to put out a My Hero Academia fanficitin about an MC who was reincarnated with the appearance of Kamisato Ayato from the game Genshin Impact. Both these stories will end up being available on my page in the near future. Hope you enjoy them and also please check out some of my other works as well. One more thing, unless I say the work is dropped it is not dropped. Just on hiatus. That is all, thanks. Chapter 47, Chapter 43, The Princess, The Elf, and The Owl House My spear leaning against my shoulder I watch the scene in front of me. Echidna, Dilek, and William taking on a pack of twelve war shadows. A month and a half has passed since we accepted these three into the familia. In that time they've gotten the hang of being adventurers and we've become closer with all of them. Which I am happy about, since each of them have brought new strengths to the familia. William's archery skills are nothing to scoff at. His accuracy shooting is incredible, even when he is dodging monster attacks and maneuvering all over the place. He's a natural bowman. He's also another long-range attacker we needed in our formation, since other than Reiner most of us fight up close and personal except when we use magic. But doing so all the time in the future would not be practical, so again having William who can attack from a distance even without magic is great. Also, that little bit of arrogance he had has basically disappeared. It happened after he experienced his first week in the dungeon. So while he's still a bit brash, he doesn't have a chip on his shoulder any longer. Which has allowed him to improve at a nice rate. Dilek is studious, and his skills with his claymore sword are no joke. We've also discovered he's at Sundara. Finally there is Echidna. Well as it turns out she's a pervert. Not only that, but apparently she's an equal opportunity pervert. Since one day a few weeks ago she grabbed Gaul's tail and he started making noises one should never make in public or around friends. Needless to say Leon Michelli gave her quite the beating for her antics, but as usual Echidna didn't look sorry at all. Instead she just kept smiling like she usually does. However, despite her perverness she is respectable when we are in the dungeon. Just like Reiner suspected she is a mage, and unlike him she already has two spells, the second of which she gained after achieving level 2. Both of which are no joke. Also, she can do co-current chanting. So as soon as we learned this we asked her to teach us. A request she has been more than happy to fulfill. So yeah, these three have been great additions to our group. Now then, as to why they are facing a group of war shadows alone it's because they are working on teamwork. Not only that, it's a way for them to raise their stats in a quick manner. We are doing this because our familia's next expedition has already been set. Our goal is the 18th floor like the times before, but this time our group is going to do something different. On this expedition our familia has decided to fight and defeat the Goliath monster Rex. Not only to gain its magic stone, but also because other than our three new recruits and rogue the rest of us are ready to level up again. So defeating that rip-off titan is just what we need to reach level 3. Yes, time for us to go on another adventure. I'm already brimming with excitement about it. As I thought about leveling up again and conquering that rip-off titan I noticed Dilek slice horizontally across the chest of two war shadows, killing them in an instant. But just as he did so one approached him from his blind spot. However before the monster could reach Dilek, William shot an arrow and struck it right in the head. Killing the beast in an instant. All right. William said. Don't get excited yet William, we're not done. Dilek told him. TCH, I know that. No need to tell me. William retorted. Besides didn't I just save your ass Red Knight? Hearing William's nickname for him Dilek's eye visibly twitched. I thought I told you not to call me that. Whatever. William said. Ignoring William's retort Dilek sliced through another war shadow in front of him. But he gave William a dirty look immediately after he did so. 
It's not like the two of them hate each other mind you. Rather, they just don't get along. If I had to equate their relationship I'd say Dalek and William are like Sanji and Zoro from One Piece. They constantly bicker but when the situation gets serious they work together. Like right now. Which I am fine with. So long as they don't actually try fighting each other. Because if they did I would stomp it out immediately. We can't have that in a familia. Lest people die because of it. Seeing their comrades defeated the eight remaining war shadows decided to attack together. Noticing this Dalek and William moved back into the side, giving Echidna a clear line of sight. Finally, my turn. She mused, putting her trademark smile on her face. Echidna raised her personal staff, bloom into the air. Image here. She then began to chant. Pierce, destroy, and rip apart. Hunt them down no matter where they may run or hide. Obliterate. G. Wald. She said. As soon as Echidna finished her chant an orb of pure white energy appeared at the tip of Bloom. Immediately after it did several high-speed beams left the orb and struck all the war shadows at once, hitting them in vital areas and killing them. This is one of Echidna's two spells. G. Wald. I precision attack type magic that allows Echidna to fire rays of intense heat from her fingertips or from weapons she wields and control their direction within a 25 meter radius of her person. These beams are so focused they can basically pierce through almost anything. Echidna really is scary. Which is why I'm glad she's on our side. As all the monsters were defeated Echidna stopped her spell and lowered gloom. But just as she did so the ceiling above her exploded open and three war shadows began descending towards her position. To naive. I shouted. As I did so Rhea who has been standing on my left raced forward and killed the three war shadows instantly. I brought her along today to help with these three training, while the others stayed on the surface to deal with other important matters. Landing on the ground after killing the three war shadows Ryu began observing our surroundings, just in case any more monsters appeared. While Echidna, William, and Dilek came to stand in front of me. You guys let your guard down too quickly. I told them. Don't ever do that in the dungeon. Not for even a second. The moment you do you'll end up dead. Like what would have just happened to Echidna if Ryo hadn't stepped in? Yes, we understand. Dilek said. We do. William said. Yes. Echidna said. Good. I said. But other than that good teamwork and taking down those war shadows. You guys are progressing nicely, and if you keep up this pace you'll definitely be ready for the next expedition in another month. I told them. Now then, let's collect the magic stones and drop items. That's enough for today. All three of them nodded. They then went to collecting the magic stones and the finger blade drop items. But just as the others did this several war shadow monsters came around one of the corners. Spotting them we all immediately got ready to fight. But before we could four figures appeared and killed them all. The moment I laid eyes on them I instantly recognized them. Raoul Nord. Anakitty Autumn. A chibi ace Wallenstein. And finally Riverial Joe's elf. Four members of the Loki familia, and also future important individuals from canon. As well as one of my future harem members. It's Riveria by the way. She really does it for me, and I'm not ashamed to admit that. The moment all the monsters were defeated Riveria turned toward the two teens and the young ace. All of you, good work but that could have gone better. Riveria told me. They all nodded their heads. Whoa, isn't that the sword princess? Dialek asked, looking at Ace. A bit of wonder in his eyes. Not surprising. Since although Ace is currently only 8 years old she holds the fastest record for recorded level up, which she managed to achieve in only 4 months. The fastest recorded time before that was 6 months. So yeah, Ace really is a big deal even now. Hearing her nickname Ace turned her gaze toward our group, 
her usual blank expression on her face like shown in the anime. The moment Ace looked at us so did Raul, Anna Kitty, and even Riveria. Hello there. I told them. Yes, hello. Riveria answered. Are we interrupting something? Not at all, we are actually just leaving. I explained. Come on guys, let's go. I said. They all nodded. We then quickly collected the rest of the monster drops and crystals and left the area. Me with a smile on my face the entire time I did so. Because now after seeing Riveria in the flesh, I am sure of one thing. She will be a part of my harem. No matter what I have to do. Exiting the dungeon we started making our way back to our inn. We have been stay at one for the past month since our home is being renovated and remodeled. Given that we didn't have enough rooms to accommodate everyone we all agreed to use the familia funds to make our home bigger. It has cost us a pretty penny but we're all sure it's definitely worth it. Once back at the inn we told the others of our encounter with Ace and the others of the Loki familia. Wow, to think you encountered the sword princess. Milhior mused. So, how was she like in person? Gaul asked. Really stoic and hard to read. Like Ryu. William said. Earning him a punch in the arm from Ryu and a round of laughs from the rest of us. But I do have to agree, the two of them are a bit similar. For instance, neither of them know the meaning the words hold back when sparring and both of them are cool beauty types. Though Ryu does show a bit more emotions than Ace. Moving on, we discussed a few more things before going to sleep. Since tomorrow is the day we get to see our new home. Getting up bright and early we gathered all our belongings and then checked out of the inn we were staying at. Once we did so we headed in the direction of our home. Arriving we saw two people waiting for us out front. Subaki, the captain of the Hephaestus familia, and the goddess Hephaestus herself. Turns out both the Hephaestus and Gognia familia don't just make weapons and armor but also do a lot of construction in Aurorio as well. And once we all decided to get our home renovated Athena told us she is old friends with Hephaestus from when in heaven and then called her up. Thus we got a good deal where the construction was concerned. Arriving in front of the pair Athena moved closer to Hephaestus, giving her a smile as she did so. Looking at our home she nodded. Hephaestus, thanks for the hard work, and as always your work is top quality. She said. Which I agree with. Our new home looks amazing. Image here. Well if I'm going to do a job I'd rather not half-ass it. That'll ruin my reputation and the reputation of my familia which I can't allow so yeah. Hephaestus spoke. Boss why are you being so modest? Subaki asked her god. Didn't you tell everyone who worked on this project to put their all into it because it was for one of your closest friends? Hearing this Hephaestus got a blush on her face as red as her hair. Well look at the time. So many things to do, let's go Tsubaki. Hephaestus said. She then grabbed her captain by the arm and started running away leaving a dust trail behind her as she did so. Subaki laughing her ass off the entire time. Looks like Hephaestus is the shy type. Ah, classic Hephaestus. Athena mused. So then, let's go and enjoy our new home. Wait a moment. Leon Michelli spoke up. A.M., how about we give this place a name? She suggested. I mean, doesn't every familia do that with their home? She's not wrong. The Astria familia calles their home Stardust Manor, while the Loki familia calls their home Twilight Manor, then there is Folkvanger of the Freya familia. I'm cool with that. I said. Yes, let's do that. Rogue added. Mechem, I wouldn't mind. Echidna said. The others agreed as well. Very well, so does anyone have any suggestions? Athena asked. The Athena Mansion. Leon Michelli suggested. But we all vetoed that. How about the Dread House? Echidna suggested. We all immediately vetoed that for so many reasons. 
As we passed around other names, I racked my brain until eventually a good name popped into my head. Guys, how about the Owl House? I said. It was one of my favorite shows in my last life before I died, and the name just rolls off the tongue. Besides, Athena is a goddess related to owls so it fits perfectly in my opinion. The Owl House. Leon Michelli mused. I like it. Yes, that sounds like a good name. Dialuk added. I agree. Gaul said. Let's go with that. William said. NHN. Rio voiced. The others then gave their agreement as well. I love it. Athena said. So from today onwards our home will be known as the Owl House. She proclaimed. Then once she did so we all moved to settle into our new home. A warm and fuzzy feeling in my chest as we did so. Chapter 48, Chapter 44, Goliath As the light coming from behind me faded I slipped back on my shirt. The moment after I did so Athena handed me my status sheet. When she did I looked at it. Name, Morex Lapis. Level, 2. Strength, A895S900. Endurance, A868A878. Dexterity, A832A840. Agility, A892S901. Magic, A898S910. Magic. Geoforce, allows the user to create and manipulate earth constructs such as weapons. The more complex the constructs are the faster mind is drained. Chant, ground and soil, heed my command and come forth. Slot 2? Slot 3? Skills. Geo Archon, increases the effect and power of any earth-based magic. It also doubles the user's strength and agility stats anytime they are in combat within rocky terrain. This allows one to be able to sense people within a 50-meter radius upon rocky terrain but only if they are part of one's familia. Gaia's embrace, when inside of rocky terrain the user's mind and physical stamina is actively but slowly restored faster than normal. Developmental abilities. Hunter, rank H. Yes. I thought. Finally after all the training and dungeon diving the stats I've wanted to reach S rank have. Not to mention my developmental ability hunter is now H rank. That wasn't there during my last update. So yeah, with this I know I am ready to level up. Giving my status sheet to Athena she disposed of it. Good luck, and stay safe. Athena said. Always, goddess. I said. I then stood up and we left her room. Maneuvering through our now mansion-sized home we returned to the foyer where the others were waiting for me, all geared up and ready to go. Okay, let's head out. I said. Everyone nodded. As they did so Ms. Reyna opened up the door for us. Take care mom. Robe told his mother. You as well. She responded. Everyone went through the door, and being the last I looked at Reyna. As always Ms. Reyna please watch over this place until we return. Of course. She said, giving me a smile as she did so. Nodding I headed out the door. I then started leading the others, toward the dungeon. Our goal, defeating the Goliath. Third person, POV. Standing outside the entrance to the Goliath's spawning chamber Morax looked at his fellow familia members. All of them had nervous expressions on their faces. But Morax chose not to comment, since he is nervous as well. This is the first time he and his companions are facing a true monster Rex after all. One that is rated to be level 4. They all know that if they make one mistake then only death awaits. Even so they are ready to face the challenge. It's why they all became adventurers in the first place. Taking in a deep breath Morax exhaled. So I'm not going to give you guys some bullshit speech. All I will say is this. Stick to the plan, and no matter what survive. I don't want to have to mourn any of you guys. The same to you. Rio said. Everyone else nodding in agreement. Alright then, let's do this. 
Morak said. Gripping the shaft of his spear tightly he led his comrades into the boss room. Sliding down the staircase they found themselves face to face with the big wall of grief. Moving into the middle of the room, the Athena familia took note of the wall cracking in front of them. Then before they knew it the face of the monster Rex, Goliath became visible. Its red eyes locking onto them. Eventually Goliath freed itself from the wall of grief. Once it did, the battle officially began. In formation. Morak shouted. As soon as he did so the Athena familia moved to their designated posts. Reiner and Echidna moved farther back, preparing their magic after they did so. Covering them in a protective circle is Dilek, William, and Rogue. Meanwhile Morax charged forward with Rio, Leon Michelli, Gaul, and Milhur beside him. Ra! Releasing a mighty shout Goliath stumped forward and formed a fist with its left hand. Swinging it down it attempted to strike Morax's group. But all of them dodged its attack. Once that happened Ryu and Gaul moved toward Goliath's heels and began attacking them. While Ryu used her blade to slash at its left heel, Gaul delivered punches and kicks to its right. Despite this, the wounds were shallow. And as soon as Goliath moved to attack them, the two moved back. The wounds aren't even that deep. But of course this isn't going to be easy. This is a monster Rex after all. Morax thought. That just means it's time for us to surpass our limits. He said. As soon as he did so he raised up his free right hand and began chanting. Ground that we walk upon, heed my command and come forth. Geo Force. As Morax finished casting his spell several earth spears erupted from the ground around Goliath and pierced its legs. Only small wounds were made, but it is progress. Releasing another furious roar the Goliath broke the earth spears piercing its legs and then lashed out with a kick with its left foot. Seeing this everyone moved to dodge, but Leon Michelli wasn't fast enough. Raising up her sword she used it to lessen the impact of the kick, but still she was sent flying and landed in the wall. Gaul, assist Leon. Morax commanded. Magic users, attack. He said. Moving with speed Gaul went to assist his sister. While Reiner and Echidna let loose their magic on the Goliath. Izuchi. Reiner cried. Goa. Echidna shouted. A torrent of flames appearing at the tip of gloom and racing towards the Goliath after they did so. This is Echidna's first spell. A super short chant attack type fire spell known as Goa. As to why she is using this instead of, Jewald, it's because Morax instructed her to save it for when the Goliath is weakened or if other monsters intrude on their battle with the monster Rex. Since that spell can handle multiple opponents at once. Fire and lighting struck the Goliath simultaneously. As they did so the beast roared as Sing Marks appeared on its chest. Even so the beast is nowhere near ready to fall. Reaching his sister Gaul helped her out of the hole in the wall she was in. Sis are you okay? Gaul asked her. Wiping some blood from her mouth Leon Michelli nodded and then stood back to her feet. Deciding to take his sister word Gaul said nothing. Instead he followed her and rejoined the battle. Feeling the magic attacks the Goliath staggered backwards. When it did Morax dashed forward, Rio and Milhur following right beside him. Getting in close they began delivering slashes to the left left leg of the monster Rex. Ignoring the blood spraying out from the wounds the three of them continued to do as much damage as possible, until the Goliath attempted to strike them with its hands. But as soon as it ready its attack they moved out its range. Hit and run tactics, that is the way to beat a big but slow monster like the Goliath. Ignoring its bleeding leg the Goliath stood back to its full height and roared. It then picked up several nearby rocks. Following the monster's gaze Morax immediately knew where it was going to throw those rocks. At Reiner and Echidna. Move now. He shouted at the rearguard. But it was too late. The Goliath threw several rocks at them. Seeing this rogue moved forward and slashed one in half with his katana. While William and Dialek moved to get Reiner and Echidna out of the line of fire. 
all of them making it out without a scratch. Once they did they began trying to get back into their formation, but the Goliath would not allow that to happen. It began throwing several rocks at the Athena Familia, intending to separate them or outright kill them. As they dodged the onslaught Morax began thinking of ways to turn the situation around. A minute passed before an idea popped into his head. Well, I'm not that good but I guess this is make it or break it. Morax told him. He then began to chant. Co-current chanting. Although Morax and the others magic users in the Athena Familia had been learning from Echidna how to preform this feat ever since she joined two months ago, none of them had come close to perfecting it like her. Even with all the training they put into it. Morax himself only manages to complete co-current chanting three out of ten times, and those were against low-level monsters. To use such a method against a monster Rex is dangerous. He knows this. But if he doesn't do something about the rocks then his familia won't stand a chance. That's why he's going to move forward here and now. Ground that we walk upon, heed my command and come forth. Geo Force. Morax shouted. As he did so he smiled, since he achieved the desired result. The moment he finished his magic a large and thick rock wall appeared in front of him, stopping a rock thrown from the Goliath from hitting him. Seeing what their captain summoned all the Athena Familia members moved to hide behind the rock wall from the Goliath's ranged attack. Nice captain. Dilek said, panting. If you hadn't created this wall we'd be in trouble. Don't think me just yet Dilek, this battle is far from over. Morex replied. Yeah, so what's the next move? Reiner asked. Magic users, prepare spells. Then as soon as the Goliath moves to reload on rocks strike at it. Morax instructed. Use this rock wall for defense. Then we'll stick with the same formation, except for one change. William start aiming your arrows for that bastard's eyes. On it. William replied. Good. Break. Morax said. Then as soon as he did so he peeked around the rock wall and saw the Goliath move to gather more stones. Okay, now. Morax shouted. Hearing this Echidna and Reiner quickly moved from behind the rock wall and cast their magic once more. What I seek is thunder, Izuchi. Izuchi. Incinerate. Goa. Fire and lighting once again moved toward the Goliath and struck the beast in the chest. As soon as this happened Morax's vanguard went on the attack again. They moved in close and started damaging both the Goliath's legs once more. Stabbing, cutting, and punching they used all their might to try and bring the monster Rex to its knees. While they did this William continually shot arrow volley at the monster's eyes to keep it off guard. Swinging its arms widely the Goliath tried to attack the Athena Familia, but missed each and every time. Even so it does not mean the vanguard is unscathed. They have various cuts and bruises on their bodies from the debris the Goliath is kicking up with its stomping as they cutting its legs. Still, it is a small price to pay to bring the beast down. The vanguard continued cutting at the Goliath's legs for five minutes straight until the beasts took several steps back. Once it did it roared again. The Goliath then stomped with its right foot, creating a mini tremor on the ground. This caused members of the Athena Familia to stagger. As they did so the Goliath threw a punch right toward Ryu. Seeing this the elf quickly steadied herself and moved to dodge. But before she could the Goliath managed to hit her left leg. Pop. An odd bile pop reverberated through the cavern as Rhea's left leg was broken, which caused her to let out a blood-curdling scream. Ag. Flying backwards Rio landed in the wall opposite of the big wall of grief. Ryu. Everyone shouted in worry. Except for Morex. He remained completely silent. All sounds faded from his hearing. Seeing Rhea thrown into the wall, and hearing her cry out in pain. It caused something in him to awaken. Turning his gaze to the Goliath Morax felt calm, eerily calm. Despite the burning rage and the urge he has to rip the Goliath apart right now. He had seen Ryu hurt before of course. It's nothing new to him. 
They are adventurers after all. But this is the first time Morex had heard Rhea cry out in pain like that. And he didn't like it one bit. Melhior, Gaul go and assist Rio now. He shouted. Keeping the calmness in his voice. Seeing their captain like this no one argued. Gaul and Melhior moved to assist Rio, while Leon Michelli turned her gaze to Morex. Hey Morex. She called out. Words being left unspoken but their meaning being implied. Are you okay to keep going? I'm fine. He said. I'm just ready to tear this fucking this apart. Morax said. Then right after he did so he felt a change take place inside of him. As soon as he did so he turned his gaze to Leon Michelli. Move back and protect the others. I've got this. He said. Leon Michelli wanted to refute Morax's words. Yet from the way he spoke, and the change in the air around him she decided to follow his words. She moved back. Ra! Letting out a roar the Goliath began stomping forward. As it did so Morex turned to face it, placing the tip of his spear in the ground as he did so. You shall not pass. He shouted. A golden veil then encompassed Morex's entire body. Once it did so he slowly began to transform. Seeing this the other Athena Familia members couldn't believe their eyes. Yet no matter how much they denied what was happening in front of them, it was still happening. Before their very eyes Morex transformed into a 7 meter long dragon. Image here. Everyone has been left speechless. They all knew how certain species of animal-based demi-human could use a skill known as beastification to transform, werewolves being a prime example. But none of them had ever heard of a human with a similar skill, let alone one who can transform into a dragon. Needless to say, this is a sight none of them will ever forget. While his companions stood in awe of his transformation Morax himself was also curious. But he put that curiosity aside due to the opponent in front of him. The Goliath. The battle between Titan and Dragon is about to take place. Chapter 49, Chapter 45, Dragon vs. Titan. Third Person, POV. In dragon form Morex stared at the Goliath. While the monster Rex did the same and turned to him. Neither of them moved a muscle, instead they just kept staring at each other. A defining silence filling the cavern. Until a small wind howled through it. The moment this happened the battle began. Taking a step forward the Goliath closed the distance to Morex and delivered a punch to his face. When this happened he skidded back slightly but otherwise held his ground. Getting his bearings Morax lashed out with his tail and slammed it into the Goliath's chest, sending the monster Rex flying back into the wall, creating a small crater as it did so. As soon as this happened Morax took a moment to breathe. After all, this is the first time he has ever transformed into a dragon and he's still not used to the body he has at the moment. Despite this, he's not going to stop until the Goliath is ground to dust. As soon as Morex collected himself he charged forward, just the Goliath pulled itself out of the wall and did the same. Reaching each other the two became entangled and started an all-out brawl. As this happened the other member of the Athena Familia could only look on in utter wonder. Completely speechless. Ignoring the pain all over her body, but especially in her broken left leg, Rio pulled herself out of the crater she created in the wall when she slammed into it. As she did so her gaze focused on the battle between the Goliath and Morix. What? Rio questioned. Since she didn't see Morix transform. At least not clearly. The impact into the wall has given her a slight concussion, so the last few moments are a bit blurry. As Rhea continued to gaze at the battle in front of her, she suddenly coughed up a mouthful of blood and fell onto the ground. But after she did so Gaul and Milhir reached her. Ryu. They both shouted in unison, their voices filled with worry. Reaching their elven companion Milhir took out an elixir and immediately opened it. She then pulled down Rhea's mask and helped her drink it. A few seconds after Rio drank the elixir the effects started to take place. Thank you. Rio said. 
feeling her strength return as she did so. No problem, Ryu. Milhyor said. Yes, no worries. We'll always have your back. Gaul said. As Ryu heard this she put a soft smile on her face. Ra! But her smile disappeared a moment later when she heard the Goliath cry out in agony. Turning her head in the direction the monster Rex Ryu saw gash marks all over its body. All of them courtesy of Morex's set of front claws. He is slowly but surely getting the hang of his new form. A dragon. Ryu said. Actually that's Morex. Milhyor informed Ryu. When this happened Ryu immediately looked towards Milhyor for confirmation once more. She nodded her head. As did Gaul. Seeing this Ryu knew they were not lying to her. The dragon fighting the Goliath is Morix. Now the question she has is, how? Swinging his left fist the Goliath landed a punch in Morix's gut. He seethed in pain but stood his ground. Taking his tail he wrapped it around the Goliath's left leg and then pulled. Tripping the monster Rex up. As soon as this happened Morex went to work using his claws to tear into the beast in front of him. Ripping off chunks of flesh with each strike, he did his best to cause as much damage as possible. Not only to finish off the Goliath, but also because he is running out of time. Morex can feel it. His transformation is coming close to an end. So that means he needs to end the battle before it does. Taking all of Morex's claw attacks the Goliath got angrier and angrier. Until finally it launched a punch and hit Morex in the face. Once this happened the monster Rex delivered several more punches in quick succession. Due to this Morex's grip on the monster's leg loosened. The moment this happened the Goliath jumped to its feet and then grabbed Morex with both its hands. It then picked him up and threw him into a nearby wall. Morex. His fellow familia members shouted just as he crashed into the wall. Fuck. Morex thought. Although the amount of damage he can take has been greatly reduced thanks to his dragonification, as he calls it, getting thrown into a wall is never fun. Picking himself up Morex saw the Goliath charging at him. When he did he immediately moved out of the way, and then raked his tail across the monster's back, opening up a huge gash. As the Goliath cried out in pain and fell to his knees Morex moved closer and then bit into its neck, going for where the jugular vein would be on a human body. Digging his claw into the Goliath deeper Morex sunk his fangs into its neck, and when he felt they were deep enough pulled. Ripping out a large chunk of the monster Rex's neck as he did so. Which was the finishing blow. The Goliath fell forward and stopped moving. A few moments after it did so Morex climbed off its back, and then shortly afterwards it dissolved into particles of light. Leaving being not only its massive magic stone, but also its drop item. The Goliath Tooth. Seeing this Morex smiled. They had done it, he and his familia had defeated their first true monster Rex. And it was a team effort in Morex's eyes, despite his sudden transformation giving them a much-needed edge. The battle over Morex and several other members of the familia felt a massive surge of exilia throughout their bodies. Signaling to them that they had once again leveled up. Despite not having their statuses updated. It is just a feeling they are getting. Morex smiled brighter upon feeling this. He was getting to congratulate the others when he realized he was still in his new dragon form. Remembering he thought of a way to change back to normal. As Morex did this he pictured his human form and then suddenly his body transformed back into it. So I guess it's that easy huh? Morex mused. Good to know. He said. Now back in human form Morex turned to his friends and fellow familia members and got ready to tell them job well done. But as soon as he did so he suddenly felt all the energy leave his body. Falling towards the ground Morex's vision began turning black. Damn, guess the transformation didn't come without a toll after all. Morex thought. Right after he did so he blacked out. Chapter 50, Chapter 46, Awakening Morex, POV Slowly but surely I opened my eyes. 
Then I immediately closed them again due to the light I saw giving me a splitting headache as soon as I did so. Okay, let's not do that again. I thought. I waited a few moments for my headache to stop. Then once it did so I opened my eyes again. But this time I did it slowly. Which worked. I was able to open my eyes without any issues. Once I did I noticed I was inside of a tent. I also noticed there was something in my left hand. Turning my head I looked to see a hand holding my own. I then looked to see who the hand belonged to, and saw it was Ryu. She is currently lying next to me, sleeping soundly. To say I'm surprised is an understatement. Although I'm able to touch Ryu I rarely do so. I don't want to make her uncomfortable, and she is still an elf with a lot of their values embedded into her. So for her to be holding my hand, and sleeping next to me while doing so is just unbelievable since we are not lovers. Yet that is. As I tried to make sense of the situation I continued looking at Rhea's sleeping face. She looks so peaceful and content. Not like normal where she usually has the blank expression on her face. I have to say, I like this image of her. Which is why I am currently burning into my brain for later. Once I saved the image of Rhea's sleeping face into my memories I attempted to slowly slip my hand out of her grasp and leave the tent. But the moment I did this Rhea's eyes shot open and started staring into my own. Neither of us said a word and just continued to look at each other. This went on for five minutes until I finally decided to break the stalemate. So, looks like you're finally awake. I said. A cheeky grin on my face as I did so. Ryu didn't respond. Instead she got red in the face like a tomato and immediately slipped her hand out of my grasp and turned her entire body to face the other direction. A.M. Ryu. Gah! She cried, hands on her face as she did so. Hey, Ryu. I said again. But her squeals of embarrassment only got louder. Then before I knew it Ryu was outside the tent faster than I could blink. Her voice echoing back in a moment later. Morex is awake. She shouted. Then her voice completely faded. A few moments after it did so the tent flap opened up and Leon Michelli entered, a relieved smile on her face. Ah Morex thank goodness. You finally woke up. She said. Yeah. I said. So, how long have I been asleep? I asked her. Three days. Leon Michelli answered. Three days ha. Huh? I mused. Not surprised at all. After my dragonification ended I felt all my physical stamina along with all my mind completely gone right before I passed out. That's the first time something like that has ever happened to me since becoming an adventurer. I felt like I was going to die. Though I am glad that didn't happen. Even so, this tells me I need to be careful when using that transformation again in the future. Because if me ended up exhausted like this happens every time I transform then dragonification will be my last resort. Since it is literally a double-edged sword for me right now. And speaking of, looks like I'm more like the original Morix than I thought. Since I remember he could also transform into a dragon as well. Though this poses an even bigger question. I don't remember anyone in the original Danmachi series being able to transform into a dragon. Sure animal demi-humans can be astify, but again I never saw one transform into a dragon. So then, how can I and what does that make me? As I pondered this I suddenly saw a finger snapping in front of my face. Getting out of my head I saw Leon Michelli looking at me. Morax, you there? She asked. Yeah, sorry. I said. Just thinking about everything that's happened is all. Yeah, the same. Leon Michelli said. So, are you hungry? As soon as she asked me this I felt hunger. Along with the urge to use the restroom. Bathroom first, then food. I said. Leon Michelli nodded. She then moved to help me up and get me outside the tent. When we were I saw we were on the 18th floor in a campsite. 
I also saw everyone else. Except for Ryu. As soon as everyone saw me they smiled, and I returned to the favor. Then I immediately felt like I was going to pee on myself and quickly called Reiner over to help me into the woods so I could relieve myself. Moving faster he came to help me and I managed to make it just in time. I then returned to camp and was given a meal, getting an update on our situation as I did so. So none of our members died. Which lifted a weight off my chest. The only serious injuries belonged to Ryu. Which have been taken care and treated. After I passed out the others collected me, the Goliath Magic Stone and the drop item the Goliath Tooth and made their way here to the 18th floor. They then set up camp and have been watching over me ever since until I woke up. Finishing my fifth bowl of beef stew I nodded. Thanks guys. I said. No problem. Reiner said. You would have done the same for any of us. I would, in a heartbeat. Yeah. I would. I said. Also just curious, in case I hadn't woken up on my own what would have you have done? If you didn't wake up within five days we agreed to move you back to the surface as fast as possible and then take you straight to the Dien Sect Familia. Leon Michelli informed me. I nodded. Because given what I experienced I would have wanted a doctor to look at me as well. And the Dien Sect Familia has the best healers in Orario. I still might go to them once we return topside. After I talked to Athena about the situation first. Since this is something she definitely needs to know about, and that others outside the familia cannot. I don't want to think how many gods would try to forcefully recruit me if they knew what I could do. Conversely some people might try and kill me. Like Ace, since she has a hate boner for anything dragon related given what happened to her parents. Until I understand what happened to me I need to tread very carefully. So Morax let me ask, what was with that transformation? Echidna spoke. Saying the question on everyone's mind. Honestly, I have no idea. I told her. I really don't. But that's the first thing I'm going to ask Athena about once we return to the surface. Until then, what happened to me doesn't leave the familia. Everyone nodded at my words. Once they did so I started looking around but didn't see Ryu anywhere. So, where's Ryu? I asked her. In her tent. Dilek answered. Yeah. William added. After she told us you were awake she went in there and hasn't come out. Her face was also a bit red too. It was really weird. He said. Do you think we should check on her? I'm sure she's fine. I said. Since I know she's only like that because she's embarrassed about holding my hand. But if I tell the others that Ryu might die of embarrassment so for now I'll keep to myself. Once the matter with Ryu was settled I decided to head back to the tent and return to sleep. I'm still tired after all. Laying down I drifted back off to dreamland. Third person, POV. As Morax drifted back off to sleep Ryu was in her own tent her pillow pressed into her face. Her legs flailing about in the air. Why? Because she is embarrassed just like Morax suspected. After they reached the 18th floor and set up camp Rio had her leg attended to properly through the use of potions and her own magic. It sped up the recovery immensely and they discovered the damage wasn't as bad as they first thought. So Rio's leg was healed in two days. And once it was she decided to help look after Morix. Given all that he went through. So last night Rhea took her first shift, choosing to do the night watch. As the time passed by on Rhea's watch she noticed Morix beginning to twist and turn in his sleep. Seeing this Rhea wanted to calm him down. But thought that holding him down was the worst idea possible given his condition. So when Morax extended a hand in her direction Rhea suddenly found herself grasping it without even thinking. After she did so Morax settled down and slept soundly. Seeing this Rhea smiled. Then before she knew it she herself fell asleep, which led to the situation with Morax earlier. A situation Rhea never intended to have happen. But it did. 
and now her elven pride is wounded. As well as her pride as a young girl. Ryu removed her face from her pillow and pulled it into her chest, hugging it tightly. Her face still bright red as a tomato. Morex, he saw me. He definitely saw me sleeping. Ryu mused. Not only that but he saw me holding his hand. His hand. Ria said, steam beginning to come out of her head as she did so. Ha! We were holding hands. And sleeping while doing so. How, how lewd. Ryu squealed. What if Morex thinks I'm some sort of pervert now? Bringing her pillow back up to her face Ria screamed into it, her embarrassment about the situation earlier sending her into a total tailspin. Not even realizing the real reason she was feeling so ashamed at the moment. Ryu Lion has just taken her first steps to being a maiden in love. Chapter 51, Chapter 47, Answers Exiting Babel Tower I felt the sun on my face. A sensation I always find enjoyable after spending so much time in the dungeon. We spent three more days on the 18th floor for my recovery. Then once I was well enough we set off and here we are, now back on the surface. Moving down the steps of Babel several people looked in our group's direction. Not surprising considering we're lugging the monster core of Goliath with us. The thing is five meters long after all. It's the biggest monster core I've ever seen. But I know there are other bigger monster cores deeper inside the dungeon. That's why I'm keeping my excitement in check. For the most part. But man did it feel good to tear that monster apart. Ignoring the stares of others we made our way back home to the Owl House. As soon as we arrived Reina and Athena came out to greet us, smiles on their faces. Welcome back everyone. Athena said. Yes, welcome back. Reina added. Thanks. I said. Yeah, thanks mom. Rogue said. We all entered the house. Then as soon as we did so Leon Michelli, Rogue, and Ryu went to go place the Goliath monster core in a safe place. And speaking of Ryu, ever since that incident in the tent when I caught her holding my hand she hasn't looked me in the eye. Sure, she talks to me but only when necessary. Like when I gave her instructions as captain during our journey back to the surface. But other than that she's been avoiding me like the plague. If my skin wasn't so thick this kind of treatment would hurt me. But it doesn't. Still I don't like this. Which means I need to corner Rio and we need to have another chat like the one we did before that time I got injured. I mentally sighed. Just one more thing to add to my plate. Oh well. Nothing I can do about it but keep pressing on. Turning to Athena I looked her directly in the eyes, a serious expression on my face. Athena, there is a very important matter I need to discuss with you. I told her. Of course. Athena said. Once I did so we went straight to her room. Closing the door I moved to sit in a chair right in front of Athena as she took a seat on her bed. So Morax, what is the urgent matter you need to discuss with me? She asked. As soon as Athena did so I took a deep breath and the recounted everything that happened during the battle with the Goliath, including my transformation into a dragon. Throughout it all Athena didn't interrupt but as soon as I mentioned my dragonification she got an extremely serious look on her face. One I've never seen her with before. Which just goes to show it really was a good idea to let her know about my situation immediately. I finished my story and waited for Athena to respond. My, I'd never thought this would happen. Athena 4. For me to have an adepti in my familia, and in this day and age. She spoke. As soon as she did so my eyes went wide with shock. Adepti is not a term that should be in this world. It is from Genshin Impact. Yet Athena just used it. Even though I've never heard anyone else use the term ever since being reborn in this world. Athena, what is an Adepti? I asked her. Listen well Morex, do not repeat what I'm about to tell you to anyone. Athena said. 
Since the others saw I we will let them know together but no one else must find out what you can do. Lest you be hunted down like an animal for your power. She spoke. I nodded, understanding the gravity of the situation. Good. Athena said. So then to answer your question. Back in the days when gods first descended to the moral world monsters ran rampant on the surface. You know this correct? Yes. I said. Everyone does. That is true. But what most don't know. No, I should say this is something only us gods know, is about the Adepti. Athena spoke. I myself heard about this from several gods who were forced to return to heaven back during that time. In those days the process of us gods bestowing Felna upon you mortals was new and untested. As such something unexpected happened that no one foresaw. When certain people killed a certain species of monster or beast the Felna reacted and began to mutate their bodies. Giving them the ability to transform into said monster or beast. Sorry, what? I questioned. Yes, what I am saying is that certain humans obtained the power to transform into beasts. Not unlike how certain demi-human species can do so today. But this and that are two very different things. The transformation techniques employed today are vastly weaker than the powers employed by the mortals who obtained them in the days of old. Just one of them could destroy an entire legion of monsters in no time at all. Because of this and because they could transform between their human and bestial states freely we dubbed these individual adepti. Athena explained to me. Whoa. I said. Like seriously, whoa. My mind is blowing up right now. I know, it's a lot to take in and probably hard to believe. But it's true. Adepti were real. Athena said. You said were. I spoke. What happened to them? I asked. They all died in battle or simply stopped appearing once the Felna system was perfected. Athena said. Still, that's not to say they vanished entirely. Through the ages several people have acquired the powers of Adepti. However they are few and far between. Not like in the old days when they appeared regularly. Which again, is due to the perfection of the Felna system. But let's not get off topic. The point I am trying to make Morex is that you are one of these rare Adepti. Athena explained to me. I see. I said. So what's going to happen to me? I asked her. Nothing. Athena said. Now that you've awakened your power that's that. But like I said, keep this to yourself. Other gods will try to snatch you up if they learn of your adepti status. A lot of them covert power above all else. Again, understood. I said. Also, will people be able to tell that I can transform? Not at all. Athena said. Unless you tell them or they get a look at your status. Also, demi-humans won't be able to tell you're transformed based on your scent. So so long as no one visually sees you transform they won't know you have the power. She explained to me. Hearing that I sighed out in relief. This is all good to know. But man, to think I am one of these adepti. My life is never going to be boring again. Okay, now that that's out of the way, let me update your status. Athena said. Yes please. I said. I then turned around in the chair and removed my shirt. Once I did so Athena began updating my status, the faint glow from my back indicating she was doing so. Oh, looks like you have reached the requirements to leave up Morix. Athena said. Are you ready? Yes. I said. Okay then. Athena said. I then felt her initiate the level up. Morax, the level up has happened. Athena said. And thanks to it you've obtained new magic. Nice. I said. Now then, your choice of developmental abilities are as follows, mage, abnormal resistance, and spearmanship. Athena told me. Abnormal resistance please. I said. 
since that's a key developmental ability to have for the lower floors. Okay then. Athena said. I then felt another wave of energy hit my body. It's done. Athena said. She then handed me a piece of paper with my new status and I looked at it. Name, Morex Lapis. Level, 3. Strength, S900I0. Endurance, A878I0. Dexterity, A840I0. Agility, S901I0. Magic, S910I0. Magic. Geoforce, allows the user to create and manipulate earth constructs such as weapons. The more complex the constructs are the faster mind is drained. Chant, ground and soil, heed my command and come forth. Seismic burst, an enchantment type magic that allows the user to generate compressed vibrational energy around their arms or legs and coat their weapons with it. Chant, tear the earth asunder. Slot 3. Skills. Geo Archon, increases the effect and power of any earth-based magic. It also doubles the user's strength and agility stats anytime they are in combat within rocky terrain. This allows one to be able to sense people within a 50-meter radius upon rocky terrain, but only if they are part of one's familia. Dragonification, allows one to transform into a dragon that is 7 meters in length. Doing so boosts all of his stats by double. Active Trigger Transformation drastically drains mind and physical stamina. Gaia's Embrace, when inside of rocky terrain the user's mind and physical stamina is actively but slowly restored faster than normal. Developmental Abilities Hunter, Rank H Abnormal Resistance, I Looking at my new status I smile like a madman. Not only at my new skill, but also at my new magic which basically makes me whitebeard from one piece. Ah, today is a good day. Once I memorized my sheet I handed it back to Athena who disposed of it. I then excused myself and headed towards my room. Since after everything that has happened I need a hot shower and a good sleep and a comfortable bed. Once I get that I'll deal with everything else. Yes, I most certainly will. A slash n, just to be clear the Adepti are not part of the original Danmachi story or lore. I added it to explain Morax's powers. Chapter 52, Chapter 48, The Butterfly Effect is Real. Knock knock. Hearing a knock on my bedroom door I got up from my bed and answered it. In doing so I saw Leon Michelli standing on the other side. Yes? I asked her. Can we talk? She asked me. A.M., sure. I said. I then moved out of the way and let her in, closing the door as soon as she was inside. I then moved back over to my bed while Leon Michelli took up the chair from my desk. So, what do you need to talk about? I asked her. The situation between you and Ryu. Leon Michelli said. And please don't say there's nothing there. We've all noticed it. Hearing this I put a wry smile on my face. So, why is she avoiding you? Leon Michelli asked me. It's like this. I said. I then explained the whole situation of how I caught Rhea sleeping while holding my hand back in the dungeon, and that's why she's been basically avoiding me ever since. Even at dinner earlier she didn't look me in the eye and left the table as soon as he was finished giving me no chance to talk to her at all. I could have chased her down, but given all that happened to today I decided to leave it for later. I see. Leon Michelli said. She then sighed. Really, that elf is such a handful. Avoiding you over a thing like that. Hey Leon don't be like that. Rio is an elf, and you know how elven values are. I said. She's really embarrassed about me seeing her in that situation. Since despite everything Ryu is still really pure when it comes to matters of sex and such things related to it. Yeah, I got you. Leon Michelli said. So anyway now that I understand the situation can you just leave everything to me? I'll get her to back to normal with you. Sure, please and thank you. I said. 
because I know Leon Michelli can do this. Thanks. She said. Well that's all I had to say. Leon Michelli left my room, and once she did so I went back to bed. A smile on my face. This is why it pays to have good friends. Entering the guild I spotted Rose at the front desk and immediately started walking towards her, a bright smile on my face. Reiner and the rest of the guys in the familia trailing behind me, carrying the Goliath's magic stone. Due to the talk Lee and Michelli and I had last night we decided to split into two groups today. The guys would come to the guild and deal with all the procedures for our familia defeating the Goliath and collecting the benefits from it. While the girls are shopping for supplies like food for the owl house and other things. Works for me. Especially if this will get Rhea to look me straight in the face again. Reaching Rose at the counter I gave her a wink. Hello Rose, as beautiful as ever. I told her, flashing her a smile. Welcome back. Rose said, ignoring my compliment as usual. One day Rose. One day. I thought. I will break through her armor and make her respond to my comments. And I'll wait as long as it takes. Especially since I have decided I want Rose to be a member of my future harem. She's just my type. So yeah, I'm going to get through to her no matter what. Thanks for the warm welcome back. I said, giving Rose a cheeky smile. Her brow twitched at my words. Yes, progress. I thought. So anyway we're here to turn in this magic stone. It's from the Goliath we defeated. I explained to her. When I did so Rose's eyes went white for a second before her mask of indifference came back. You guys defeated the Goliath? Rose asked. We sure did. I told her. So how do we process this baby? I asked her. One moment. There is a form for doing so. Rose said. She then walked off to retrieve it. As she did so Rogue walked up to me shaking his head. So not only Shakti and Ryu, but also Rose's in your sights as well? He asked me. Yes. I answered shamelessly. Looks like you don't have any shame, huh? Rogue asked. Not true, I do have shame. Just not where this topic is concerned. I said. As I did so I noticed several people looking in our direction and whispering. More specifically they are looking at Gaul. Who at the moment has a dark cloud of depression hanging over his head and is crouching towards the ground, rubbing his finger back and forth along the floor. The reason for this is because last night after Athena got down updating our statuses and leveling up those who were ready, it was discovered that Leon Michelli obtained magic. Which means out of our original group goal is the only one who doesn't have any magic yet. Hence his current mood. Oh Gaul stand up. Everyone is looking at us. William told him. Ah, whatever. Gaul said. A hollow look in his eyes. It doesn't matter anyway. Gaul no need to be so down. Dilek told him. You're not the only one without any magic. Neither I, William, or Rogue have any either. So we're all in the same boat. Yeah, but that's only for now. Gaul quickly countered. After all you and William are only still level 1 and Rogue is almost ready to level up, so who's to say you won't gain magic when you do? Unlike me who is level 3 and still has no magic whatsoever. He said. The cloud of depression getting heavier as he did so. Magic, I want it. Looking at Gaul I put a wry smile on my face, as did Reiner. We can't say anything to him. I gained a new magic spell, and Reiner did as well. So yeah. Us talking to him would only make things worse. I'll have Athena deal with this when we get back. Deciding to let Gaul be for the moment I turned back around and watched as Rose returned with the paperwork that she spoke up. Once she did I filled it out quickly and we turned over the Goliath's magic stone as well as the other magic stones we acquired on this most recent expedition. In doing so we got a total of 2 billion Valis. The Goliath's magic stone is worth a pretty penny. 
Securing our funds we prepared to leave the guild. But as we did so we ran into some familiar faces. Elise, Kagaya, and Nies. Along with one other hiding behind them. Oh hey Morex, fancy running into you guys here. Nies spoke up. Yep, the same. I said. So, from the money you have I take it this most recent expedition went well? Kagaya asked. It did. Rogue answered. It went really well. Yeah. Reiner added. Oh, do tell? Elise asked. To put it simply we not only defeated the monster Rex Goliath but a lot of us also leveled up. I quickly explained. I for example am now level 3. Oh, so cool. Elise mused. Kagaya, knees, as soon as we get back we're planning another expedition and taking on the Goliath when it respawns. We can't let our allies get too far ahead of us. Foo, yes captain. Kagaya said. Sure thing. Knees said. Alrighty then. Elise said, putting a smile on her face. She then turned to me. Morex, we're not going to lose to you guys. Sure. Bring it on. I said. Since us and the Astria Familia have a friendly competition going on. After I met Elisa's challenge, as usual, I looked at the person behind her once more. Catching me doing so Elise moved out of the way and exposed the person behind her back. The moment I laid eyes on her I couldn't believe it. Since the person behind Elisa's back is none other than Philvis Chalia. I'd know the dark-haired and red-eyed elf anywhere. Eh, Morex why are you staring so hard at our newest recruit? Elise asked me, a grin on her face. Could it be you got captivated by her beauty at first sight and are now in love with her? No. I said, snapping out of my daze. It's just I've never met an elf with black hair is all. Well they are rare. William spoke up. Yes, we are. Philvis spoke softly. So, she's your newest recruit? Reiner asked. Yep. Elise said, nodding her head. We came to the guild today to get her registered. Which we really should get to. So please excuse us. Kagaya spoke. After that us and the Astria females parted ways. As we walked back toward the owl house I could only think one thing. The butterfly effect is all too real. Originally Philvis was supposed to be part of that prick Dionysus's familia. But now things have changed. She's joined the Astria familia. All I can say is good for her. Since if there was anyone who got fucked over hard in the original story it was Philvis. Force turned into a monster hybrid, and unable to kill herself. She brought terror against her will and in the end was killed by her best friend slash possible love interest Lafia. Since I'm pretty sure Lafia might be a lesbian. Given all her intense fantasies about Ace. But back to the point. I cried when I read her final moments in the Sword Oratorio light novels. So I'm glad she won't end up that way. Even if she did join the Astria Familia who was slated to die within a few years. Which is not going to happen. I've come to see those girls as friends, and they're not dying on my watch. I swear it. Since I know now the butterfly effect is real I'll use it to my advantage. Chapter 53, Chapter 49, Girls Talk. Third Person, POV. While the guys of the Athena Familia were taking care of matters at the guild the girls were out and about shopping. Not only for everyday things like food but also for potions and other essentials for exploring the dungeon. This arrangement had been decided by Morex and Leon Michelli the previous night when they had their brief talk in the former's room. At breakfast the next morning the plan was laid out and no one objected. Once it was things got moving. Bags in hand the females of the Athena Familia moved through the streets of Orario. Along with them their goddess Athena and Rogue's mother Reina, the caretaker of the Owl House when the others were on expeditions in the dungeons. The group of ladies moved through the streets, taking in all that was around them. From the goods being sold in the stalls they passed to the different people in general. 
Well, all except one of them. Ryu. Why? Because at the moment she is very embarrassed. Currently Ryu isn't wearing her mask. Athena forbid her to do so today so she could get used to people outside the familia seeing her face. At first Ryu objected, but that only lasted for a moment due to Athena's persuasive words. Needless to say Rhea stopped objecting. But things did not end there. No. Instead of being allowed to wear her usual casual clothing which mostly consisted of pants and long shirts, Ryu was forced into a dress. A green one to be precise. One which only extended to just above her knees and has no sleeves at all, leaving her arms bare. For a conservative elf like Ryu who hates showing more skin than necessary, this is basically torture. But no matter how much she protested Athena and the other girls ignored her pleas and now here she is. Out and about, getting looks from men and male gods alike. Ryu is doing her best to ignore the stares. In fact, she is even sending a cold glare at those people giving her lecherous looks. But unfortunately that is only making them stare at her more. Since apparently being looked at like they are trash by a pretty young elf is an experience the males both mortal and god alike are coming to quickly enjoy. The girls continued to walk around and browse, until eventually they all started to get hungry. So they searched for a place to have lunch and found a nice little cafe. Entering they were seated outside on a terrace. As they placed their orders Leon Michelli decided it was time to make good on her promise to Morix. Okay, may I have your attention please? She spoke, causing everyone to look at her. Today I would like to welcome you all to the first ever Athena Familia Girls Talk. She said. Leon Michelli and Milhior often did girls talk together when they were younger just the two of them. Discussing problems and issues with each other and helping each other to work them out if they could. And now that they had more female friends and were part of a familia Leon Michelli decided to make the girls talk a thing amongst them all. Oh, interesting. Echidna mused. A.M., what are we doing? Ryu asked. Since she had never done anything like what Leon Michelli just said in her life. Basically Ryu were going to discuss in problems or issues we might be having and getting opinions from the others here on how to resolve them. Milhior explained to Ryu. But if you don't want to speak no one is going to force you to. Ah, it's been such a long time since I've done something like this. Reyna said. This sounds fun. Athena mused. I'm glad you all think so. Leon Michelli said. So then first order of business. Seems Ryu has an issue. Eh? Ryu exclaimed. A surprised expression on her face. A.M., Leon I don't have any issues. But you do. Leon Michelli retorted, a small grin on her face as she did so. It has come to my attention Ryu that you are avoiding Morix. N, no. Not at all. Ryo quickly retorted. Her eyes darting back and forth and her face slightly embarrassed as she did so. Seeing the other ladies at the table all had the same thought. Such a bad liar. Which is true. Lying is one of Ria's worst qualities. Which is fine most of the time. But in a situation like right now it is her undoing so to speak. Ria, we can all tell you're lying. Leon Michelli said. So please, stop. I, I, fine. Rio said, hanging her head in defeat. Okay, so then let's move on. Leon Michelli said. Seems Rio is avoiding Morex due to an incident that happened during our most recent expedition. Go on and elaborate Rio. Leon Michelli said. As soon as she did so all eyes turned to Rio. Seeing no way out she decided to get things over with quickly. Well. During the expedition when Morex was recovering I watched over him after I recovered. It was during the night. As I did this I noticed him twisting and turning in his sleep so I, I held his hand to calm him down. Rio explained. Her cheeks flushing a bit as she did so. That's not the end of it. Finish the story Rio. Leon Michelli told her. 
Mu, Leon please don't make me. Ryo cried in embarrassment. It's too embarrassing to say out loud. What is? Milhyar questioned. Fufu, goodness Ria you didn't sneak a peek at Morax's penis while he was sleeping did you? Echidna asked. No. Ria instantly denied. Her face getting redder as she did so. Ah, really? You really didn't? Echidna asked. I didn't. Ryu denied again. Echidna stopped teasing Ryu. Leon Michelli said. But it's so much fun I couldn't resist. Echidna responded. Laughing lightly as she did so. Really she is undeniably black-hearted. But she cares for her allies so they put up with it. Leon Michelli simply shook her head at Echidna's actions. She then decided to put things back on topic. Okay so here is the situation. Morax woke up and caught Rhea sleeping next to him and holding his hand. Since then this elf has been avoiding him unless absolutely necessary. She explained. So, thoughts everyone? Ah, Rio stop avoiding Morix. Milhior spoke. Yes, you shouldn't be avoiding him over something like that. Echidna added. I mean it would be a different manner if you had SE dash. Before she could finish her thought and say something lewd Leon Michelli placed Echidna in a sleeper lock chokehold. Which only made her smile brightly and get a hint of pink on her perfectly white cheeks. Echidna seems to be awakening a certain fetish. But that is a story for another time. Now Rio I agree with Milhior and Echidna before she was about to add her lewdness into her comment. Leon Michelli spoke. Avoiding Morex like this isn't right. Athena and Rain said nothing, but simply nodded their heads in agreement with the others. I know it's not right. Ryu admitted. But well. Yes? Athena questioned. What if Morix thinks I'm sort of pervert now? Ryo cried. As she did so everyone looked at her like she had grown a second head. Noticing the stares she was getting Ryo titled her head in confusion. Eh, why are you all looking at me like that? Ria, you think Morix will think you're a pervert just because you held his hand while he was sleeping? Leon Michelli asked. Ryo nodded. Yes. I mean, our bare skin was touching. We shared heat, Morix's hand was so warm. It made me feel at ease. Ah, it was nice to hold his hand. I got happy. But our bare skin touched, it touched. She spoke. As Ria continued to ramble the other girls all had one thought again in unison. Ryu is too pure and innocent. Leon Michelli didn't know what sort of mythical creature she was looking at. For Ryo to become like this just from holding hands. She thought Morax was exaggerating about how pure Ryu was, but now with the evidence in front of her she can see he was not. This won't do. Not at all. Leon Michelli thought. She will not allow Ria to remain so ignorant on matter pertaining to sex and intimate relationships. Leon Michelli has decided to teach Ryu about such things. For her own sake. As well as for Morex's. Since it's pretty obvious to everyone he likes Ryu as a woman, except for the person herself. But seeing her reaction right now Leon Michelli can see Ryu might be gaining feelings of her own. This knowledge put a serene smile on her face. Seeing this Ria stopped rambling and looked at Leon Michelli's smile. As she did so she felt she was missing something. But before she could speak again Athena did so. Ria, you need to talk things out properly with Morix. She said. For both your sakes. You are part of the same familia, but more than that you are friends. He probably thinks he might have done something to upset you and that's why you're avoiding him. But he did nothing. Rio said. Then tell him that. Athena said. Running away from problems doesn't solve them. What you need to do is face then head on. Doing so will allow you to grow as a person. Now I'm not saying you have to talk to Morex right away. But you need to do so eventually and sooner rather than later. 
Understand? Yes, goddess. Rio said. Good. Athena said. All right then. So unless anyone else has anything they wish to discuss then I declare the first girl talk meeting of the Athena Familia over. Leon Michelli said. Wait, I have something to say. Echidna spoke up. I'm probably going to regret this but what do you need yo say Echidna? Leon Michelli asked. Fufu, Ryu if you really want to apologize to Morix I know the perfect way. Echidna spoke. Simply sneak into his room and... As Echidna described her plan in vivid detail Rhea's face became a tomato and steam started escaping the top of her head. As it did Milhior moved to attend to while Leon Michelli dragged Echidna off by the nape of her dress. Intending to take her somewhere to deliver sever punishment for the lewd things she just said to Ryu. As this happened the smile on Echidna's face got wider. Like everything had just going according to her plan. Needless to say after her punishment she returned to the table with a serene smile on her face. Which everyone chose to ignore. Instead they just ate their lunch and enjoyed the rest of their outing. While they did so Ryu resolved herself to settle things with Morix. So the first ever Athena Familia girls talk was a resounding success. The first of many. Chapter 54, Chapter 50, A Step Forward in Many Directions. Morax, POV. Entering the owl house with the other guys we moved to place the money we got from the guild in a secure room in the house. Banks don't seem to be a thing here. So Familia generally turn one room in their stronghold into their own personal bank vault. Which is what we did as well. Once the cash was secure we all decided to relax until the girls came back. By playing cards. Even Gaul got into it. Getting him out of his depressive state. Having fun the time passed by before we knew it. Finishing up another game of blackjack we heard the front door opening. We're back. Leon Michelli said. As she did so the girls walked in one by one their arms filled with bags. Seeing this we decided to help them. But as we did so my brain froze and the blue EXE. Screen appeared in my mind. Why? Because Ryu is wearing a dress. Never before I have seen her in a dress. She looks amazing. So yeah, I ended up stuck in place. But thankfully it only lasted a moment before I rebooted. Once I did so I finished helping the others put things away. As soon as we did Reina went to go clean and the rest of us converged in the living room to have one of our post-expedition meetings. Okay, so all the money we got from the expedition this time came out to 2 billion valis. I told the ladies. Ah, just think of all the books I can buy. Echidna said. I want a new sword. Leon Michelli said. Yes, yes. We will get all that. I said. But first, here is how we're going to divide the funds. 500,000 will be placed in the General Familia Fund. The rest will be used to buy new equipment, dividing out the personal funds for everyone of course. Then what's left will go into the General Familia Fund as well. Any objections? No one spoke. All right then. Next order of business. What to do with the Goliath Tooth? I said. The drop item of a normal Goliath. Its durability is rather incredible and is great for making armors and weapons. Which is why we haven't tried to sell it yet. When I brought up the tooth everyone looked at me. Well while you were recovering during our time on the 18th floor we all talked about it and decided you should get the tooth. Leon Michelli told me. And we won't take no for an answer. Reiner said. Yeah, after all you did most of the work in defeating the Goliath. So you should have it. Dilek spoke. Exactly. William added. Take it. Rio said. Morax, please put it to good use. Milhior spoke. Gaul gave me a thumbs up. Well since everyone wants to have it I'll accept. Okay then. I'll accept the tooth. I said. 
And since I have please start trying to find some mithril at a good price guys? Oh, so you have already put some thought into what you want from the tooth? I nodded. It's time to get myself a proper weapon. The durability of the Goliath tooth combined with the magical conducting properties of mithril will be quite devastating. Okay, next order of business. I said. Actually I don't there is anything pressing we need to discuss. Leon Michelli spoke up. Everyone else nodded in agreement. Well then, meeting adjourned. Athena said. When she did so we all split up. I headed to my room, and as I did so Rhea followed me. Stopping outside my door I turned to face her. Yes, Rio? Am, sorry. She softly said. For what? I asked her. Avoiding you. Rio said. It's fine. I said. But it's not. Rio objected. You are always nothing but nice to me. Yet ever since we met I've constantly done things to obstruct your kindness. As I said Ryu, it's fine. I told her once more. We're people. And people make mistakes. But that too is a part of life. Everyone has their own worries and insecurities, even me. But working through said issues allows people to gain new experiences. I understand you are going through things. But I am your friend, so know that even if you stumble I will never abandon you. I explained. And I mean it. I don't abandon friends unless certain circumstances happen. Ah, okay. Thank you. Rio said. Don't mention it. I told her. Smiling as I did so. Seeing this Rio put a smile upon her face. The moment I saw this a warm feeling flooded my chest and I felt my body heat up. Well then, good talk. See you later. I said. I then entered my room and released a sigh. That was close. Seeing Rhea smile and her in that dress made me want to kiss her. But it's still too early for that. Though in one more year it won't be. Due to my mental age I don't feel comfortable dating until I am at least 14. Call me pathetic if you want I don't care. That's a rule I won't break. But once my 14th birthday passes the gloves will come off and all the girls I have my eye on will fall into my hands. Without a doubt. Putting a smile on my face I went to lie down on my bed. Happy things between Ryu and I are back to normal. Sitting across from Leon Michelli I held a quill pen in my hand and attended to bane of any leader in any world. Paperwork. Although we are not a large familia we still have paperwork to attend to. And by us I mean me, Leon Michelli and Athena since we are the leaders. Finishing up one of my last documents for the day I put it into the completed stack in the middle of the table and stretched my arms into the air. Looking out the window as I did so. Looks like a nice day. I said. Yeah, and the sooner we finish this torture known as paperwork the sooner we can go enjoy it. Leon Michelli said. True. I said. I then picked up another document and got ready to start working on it, only for Athena to enter the room. Which is my office by the way. Yeah, I have one of those. Being the captain does seem to have its perks. Oh hello Athena. I said. What's up? I asked her. A letter from the guild. She said. The moment she did so Leon Michelli and I both got serious. Wondering just what the guild wanted from us. Moving over to the table Athena opened the envelope and pulled out the letter for all three of us to see. As we read it I couldn't believe the contents. Apparently the Athena familia is now being classified as a D-rank exploration type familia. We also have a direct quest from the guild. Our job, retrieve materials from the 19-24th floors. Also known as the Large Tree Labyrinth. Looks like we just took a huge leap forward in many directions. Well I say bring it on. Chapter 55, Chapter 51, Prep Work. 
Athena, Leon Michelli, and I continued looking at the letter from the guild. The three of us still in a bit of shock at its contents. We are now classified as a D-rank exploration familia. Not only that, but we also have a guild assigned mission already. Collect materials from the Great Tree Labyrinth, also known as floors 19 to 24 of the dungeon. This is a big step for us no matter how you look at it. Still, I'm not upset in the slightest. Rather, I am excited by the task presented to us. Taking on new challenges is how people grow to surpass their limits after all. Which I am more than ready to do. It's one of the reasons I became an adventurer in the first place. As we finished reading the letter from the guild Athena placed it on my desk. Well, this is quite a surprise. I said. Yes it sure is. Athena added. Still what's done is done. So the only thing we can do is deal with it and move forward. I nodded my head in agreement. Looks like our resting time is over. I said. Which is fine. Since we've had two weeks on the surface to rest and recuperate from our battle with the Goliath. Wait, 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 isn't this a bit too fast? Leon Michelli questioned. I mean I'm happy we're being recognized by the guild for our efforts but suddenly being promoted from an I-rank familia to a D-rank one and given a mandatory quest along with it seems to be coming out of nowhere right? Actually no. Athena spoke up. Goddess what do you mean? Leon Michelli asked her. While I'm not sure of all the criteria the guild uses to determine a familia's ranking, but there are three big factors they always take into account. 1. The number of members in a familia. 2. The accomplishments achieved by a familia. 3. The potential a familia has. She explained to us. Although we only formed two years ago all of you have already leveled up several times. In the public eye we have three level threes and a number of level twos. And all of you children are still quite young as well. But you've managed to achieve something those who have been adventuring for years have not. We also have 10 members so we are classified as a medium-sized familia now. Not only that but we regularly go to the middle floors. And to top it all off we just took down the first big monster wrecks of the dungeon. The guild may not seem like it's watching but it is, and thus they have used all this to determine the rank of our familia. Hence why we are now D-rank. Which I have to say I am very happy about. Atina finished with a smile. Okay, I get it now. Leon Michelli said. I'm glad. Athena spoke. All right. So next order of business. Time for a meeting to discuss this matter. I said. Athena and Leon Michelli both nodded. Once they did so we immediately began preparations. Since it is the key to success after all. As dinner ended I called everyone into the living room. Taking a seat on one of the couches I explained the information we received from the guild earlier in the day. Finishing I noticed the other's happiness. But I also noticed some tension as well. All right, we are moving up. Gaul happily said. Yeah, but doing so brings more responsibility. As you can see by the mission we got assigned. Dilek said. So, all we have to do is complete it and everything will be fine. Gaul responded. Easier said than done little brother. Leon Michelli spoke. Easier said than done. She's right. Although the Great Tree Labyrinth is part of the middle floors it's a completely different world from the 13th to 17th floors. In this region of the dungeon we are heading into all monsters are classified as high level 2s and above. Not to mention a lot of them have the ability to induce the poison status effect. Which means the ones in our party without the abnormal resistance developmental ability are going to have the toughest time. By the way, that list only includes Echidna, Dilek, and William. Since when Rogue level up a few months ago he went with abnormal resistance as his first developmental ability. While during this most recent level up everyone acquired it. Even though we didn't plan on it happening like it. It would seem fate guided us towards this decision somehow. Which I am grateful for. 
Well, regardless of whether it's easy or not, we have to complete this quest. Rogue spoke. So, how long do we have to get it done? A month. I spoke. Well, that's not bad at all. Reiner spoke. It's not. I retorted. Morex, when do we leave? Ryu asked me. In two weeks. I told her. The day after the next Donatus concludes. Two weeks gives us plenty of preparation time, and also I want to hear everyone's aliases before we head out. I'm curious as to what they will be. At my words everyone nodded. Okay then, so if there are no other pressing issues the meeting is adjourned. I said. No one spoke up. Thus the meeting ended and we all went our separate ways for the night. Moving through the city streets I headed toward my destination. Athena by my side. Two days have passed since our meeting to discuss the guild-assigned expedition. Since then everyone has gotten working on preparing for it. Right now I am headed to the Hephaestus Familia home. I asked Athena to contact them immediately once I was given the Goliath II by the others and decided to have a weapon forged from it. Since she and Hephaestus are good friends. It took a bit of time but now they have found a smith that will be willing go forge my weapon for me and give me a decent price. Since items from a smithing familia are not cheap. But they're well worth the valus they cost. Still since I don't want to bankrupt my familia I needed a decent deal. Which I am going to get. I hope. Athena and I continued making our way. As we did so someone called out to me. Amorex. Hearing Artie I stopped in my tracks and turned to my side. I then saw her walking towards me, her usual on her face. Her sister Shakti walking right beside her. Both of them in casual clothing. To see Shakti in casual clothing instead of her usual adventurer garb, it feels good. I am burning this image to my brain. As soon as the two sisters reached us Shakti looked at me. I gave her a smile as she did so. Yes Shakti, something you need my dear? I asked her. She sighed. You know you should really stop. She told me. Because no matter how many times you compliment me I will never go on a date with you. I'm not into little boys after all. Ouch. I said. Clutching my chest in mock hurt. Harsh Shakti. But that doesn't bother me at all. I won't give up on you, and I am serious. And for the record I won't be a boy much longer. Hey Morex, please stop flirting with my sister in front of me. Artie said. Artie, we are not flirting. Shakti said. Really, I think we are. I said. As I did so Shakti glared at me. But it doesn't scare me at all. Rather, it feels good to have her glare at me. Wait. Oh no. I think I might be a bit of a masochist. Eh, I'm fine with that. Furu, my you sisters are certainly quite the breathe of fresh air. Athena said. Please forgive me goddess Athena. Shakti said. No, it's quite alright Mrs. Varma. Athena said. And besides, it's nice to chat with one of the women my child wants to have in his harem. Harem. The sisters cried out in unison. I just simply nodded. That's right. I said. Oh my Morex, to think you would be do daring. Artie said. Well I like what I like and I won't apologize for it. I said. Besides, lots of adventures enter into polygamous relationships. Both male and female. So me forming a harem isn't strange in the slightest. Shakti said nothing at the revelation and instead glared at me even more. It's making me a bit excited actually. Well although I am enjoying this we have a meeting to keep so please excuse us. I said. Oh, what are you up to Morex? Artie asked me. Getting a new weapon made for an expedition assigned to my familia by the guild. I explained. A mandatory expedition. Shakti mused. I nodded. 
I then gave the sisters the details. We're allies after all so I see no issue in doing so. Once I finished explaining things Artie spoke up. Hey Morax, mind if I tag along with you guys? She asked. I mean sure. I'm fine with it and the others will be as well. We are all good friends with Artie after all. But if I may ask, why? I just recently made level 3 and want to test my skills. But everyone else in my own familia strong enough to help me do so is too busy at the moment. She explained. I see. I said. Well again I'm fine with it. But your captain also has to agree. I looked at Shakti. So, what say you? Sure. Shakti said. As she did so arty and I high-fived. Athena and I then bid the sisters farewell and continued on our way. Looks the prep work for the expedition isn't the only thing getting done. The same is true for my future relationships as well.